First frame, Fakhri to break. Right, Mr. Farad James, good afternoon to the viewers. What a matchup we have in store for us here. Yes, good afternoon to all the viewers and my fellow commentator, uh, Cuban Mudli. We have an epic duel ahead of us. Uh, it's been a few days of brilliant snooker and it's culminated in this final. Um, so I am sure that we're going to see some world-class snooker on display this afternoon. Well, I think we're going to be in for a treat here. Both guys uh, definitely after this title. They want this title badly. I don't even think the prize money means too much, but uh, definitely want the prize money. How, how was that opening function and uh, uh, present, uh, sorry, not presentation. Uh, how was that opening function, referee's parade and the honor of uh, table technician, Dirk, who has been in the business for at least 30 years. Uh, what a wonderful job he's done setting up this venue. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Cuban, on first sight, I'd be forgiven uh, for, for thinking I was elsewhere. But this is at the Gold Reef City Bullion Room in South Africa. It is a world-class setup and uh, honoring uh, a legend of uh, a table fitter in Dirk. Uh, certainly, uh, we've seen his work all over the country and a uh, fitting tribute to him. On this opening frame, a bit of nerves by Shao in, in, with the first red. One. Well, he uh, probably would have kept a keen eye on Fakhri's performance yesterday and all those long pots that he was making. So he knows that uh, Fakhri is playing well. So obviously, uh, you're going to have to be very cautious and you're going to have a little bit of nerves. But I'm pretty sure once he's pot potted a couple of balls, he's going to feel nice. Fakhri just potted a red with the rest nicely on the black getting straight into the business end of the frame? Yes, um, this is uh, a marathon, uh, not a race, not a sprint. So we'll have to see some good safeties, excellent potting, and more importantly, Nine. mentally, uh, one has to be strong to carry you through the entire match. And Fakhri started off with a opening red and begun his break. He's looking quite comfortable around this table. Yeah, definitely. I spoke to both players. They're both up for this one. Both wanted Boy. badly. Um, now, Fakhri has also won the South African Classic earlier on this year. Obviously, his confidence is up high. He's played some brilliant matches. He didn't start his first match particularly well, uh, but definitely grew in strength since then. So, he's up for this, feeling confident. Striking the ball well. Uh, well, he's put an extension on his cue. Fakhri 14. Reached. Bit of an overreach. And just rattle that ball. We may see this in the, the first frame is the players just absorb what they, um, where, where they are at and the, the uh, huge occasion and the spectators and they will take a few shots to settle down, but uh, I'm well, sure from it, there... it keeps getting bigger and bigger. I mean, firstly, uh, you know, they have to just contend with, uh, you know, a uh, match arena that's world-class. Now they've got to uh, uh, contend with live television. They're now going to con uh, contend with uh, more spectators in the venue. So it's, uh, it's, it, every experience that they've come in here is a new experience, but... They definitely, well, you, yeah, now, I always say you've got to perform. <laughs> Nothing else you can do. But both these players have been on the big stage before. They both have a uh, big match temperament. So I don't think they'll be very faced. And we'll see some good snooker. And we're going to have a bit of an ex safety uh, exchange of a safety battle here. Charles seemed to have stuck a red up in your bottom right hand pocket and I'm sure Fakhri will take this on. No, definitely his long potting was superb yesterday. It hasn't deserted him. Nice One. swing around cannon on the red. Beautiful pot on the black. 
Yeah, as you can, I think he's gonna definitely score a few more points over here. I'm going to have to hand over hey. now to Munir Kassam. He's going to join you with the rest of the commentary. Not for throughout the day, I will be back. Got to attend to some official duties. Nine. Thank you, Cuban. Fakhri has drawn first blood and He's poised to put up a sizable break. 40. Fifteen. Excellent pot in the red to develop the pink. Welcome to my fellow commentator, Mr. Munir Kesem. Glad to have you here this afternoon. Thank you for that. It's a and honored to be here and to be present at this final. I think we've got potentially two of the, one of the best players in the country Three present one. in this final. No doubt, no doubt, Munir. And already it promises to be an exciting final from the start we're getting here. Fakhri on a 22 break, you think he'll go for this brown and continue the break or opt for his safety? Oh, he's definitely going to be attacking here for he's us. Attacking. He's, he's in attacking mood, you can see that. He's just got to hang back a little bit with the white. This, these tables are very fast. 26. And it takes a few balls to get used to them again. Well, with the 26 break, puts Fakhri uh, 40 points oh, in the lead in the first frame. And Shaw has got a chance to respond, you know, for he's, uh, he's got a chance to, to get onto the black here. Uh, he might even opt to go for the blue, but he has got a chance to respond with the break of his hand. Okay, taking the safe route and rather opting for the blue and rather play himself into the game. I think that was the more prudent shot to play, staying high on the blue, going back into the pack, into the reds, yes. and back down into the reds, and he can continue with his break. He's been solid this entire tournament, so I think Fakhri has his hands full. Shaw looks very composed at the moment, uh, Farad. You can see he's just got concentration all over his face. And he wants to do well here. Seven. Slight nudge on the red to, to hold on to the black. He's... Uh, Shaw plays such precision snooker. Soft stuns, draw back on the white, perfect position, and he goes about a business very swiftly and easily. He makes the game look very easily. And if you look at that cue action, very smooth, decisive. And you look at this. Straight, yeah. Look at this replay, and we can see. 40. Steady. Very steady Q action, he goes down, makes no mistake. Fifteen. He's not here to, to mess about, Rod. You can see he's here to do the business. Extremely focused. He wants to bag his fourth pro snooker title. And not only that, Farad, I think he, he, he wants to prove that he is the superior player in the country. And uh, for the viewers that don't know, he doesn't play in the mainstream snooker at the moment. He will be playing next year, however. So he wants to prove to everybody that he is the best in the country. But he'll have to do it on the table. And he'll have to eventually come to the SE Championships and, and win one of those titles to prove his pedigree, which I feel he can do. Just a bit of lapse of concentration there. 
It's uh, understandable no, early on in the match. Sure. I think titles aside and so forth, um, there's no doubt in my mind that Charles has certainly proven that he can be, he is ranked amongst the top players in this country, no doubt. Without a doubt, Farad. And also notching up a couple of centuries in this tournament. Uh, there's not many players that can do that. There's only a handful of players in this country that can be making centuries, multiple centuries in events, and he is one of them. Sure. Fakhri getting a bit fortunate and going to pack and flicking a red. He's not on the right side of the green. So I think he's, he's he wants yeah, he may be opting for safety or going for the uh, aggressive shot safety. And um, I think it was the right choice given that there wasn't an easy red on thereafter. So definitely for showing a lot of respect early on in the frame, playing sensible snooker. We should expect this type of uh, play in the game. I think they will be keeping one another quite tight because they've both seen now when they got an opportunity they are ready to pounce and they will have to crea create their own opportunities. It's going to be very challenging for both of them to, to make high breaks if they're going to be playing conservative. But let's see what happens. Charles effectively coming out of the snooker, but it would have been, it's almost impossible to get that cue ball safe after having come out of that snooker. So he had to eat the ball on and presenting Fakhri with an opportunity now to make a sizable break and perhaps uh, seal this opening frame. There's a bit of work to do with the white ball there for Art, a little bit because the Black to the left pocket is a bit tight, so he's got a nice, tricky little pink. I say tricky because it's easily missable. It looks easy, but it's not. But Fakhri takes it with a lot of ease and makes it look easy. Well, Fakhri has been potting in those center uh, pockets. It seems to yeah. not phase him at all. He is an extremely prolific potter in, the, in those center pockets. And he seems also Eight. very confident today. He's getting stronger. From what I witnessed yesterday, uh, he is looking very determined and he is looking very strong. Certainly so, is. So both players are up for it. And this is good snooker for South African TV and any of our international viewers watching. 14. It's not a bad standard of play. The, the pockets are cut to the international standard. For those that don't know, we use the IBSF templates, 15. which is very similar to the WPBSA templates. Pockets look, they look, they look, uh, seem to be big, but they're not. It's because of the cushion slide, it, it takes the ball in very nicely. But they are tight, I've played on the table. It's not as easy as it looks. Certainly, Fakhri now on a 20 break, make the 21, 21. with 35 left on the table. Well, Shaw already needs snookers at this stage. Shaw would require snookers, so... Fakhri seems to have drawn first blood. 26. This is completely new territory for Shaw. He's not used to losing the first game. This is probably a first for him in a long time. Yeah, he had uh, certainly shown that he is the best and he's the player to beat uh, on the pro snooker circuit as um, he had won all of the uh, all three previous events 22. and um, the prolific wins uh, leading up yeah. to the final yes definitely the crowd showing the appreciation on that blue he came nicely through the top cushion back onto the yellow he might have wanted to run a little bit more but it's it's not a bad position to get onto the green just has to run through, come off the bottom cushion back onto the green. Oh, he just played it a little too hard. And Frank. But that was enough. That was enough to seal the first game. Correct. Uh, Fakhri with a 51 point lead and only 27 left on the table. Uh, the concession by Charles Young. So, Farad, from what I can see, we're going to have a very interesting match. Uh, I think Fakhri is up for the battle. 
and let's not write off Shaw because he has, he has got a good temperament. Oh, certainly. I think yeah. it's way too early in the match to write anyone off, exactly. especially uh, Shaw, who's made this tournament his own. And um, this one is far from over. We've just seen the first frame, but I think we're in for some entertaining and world-class and quality snooker um, that we're going to be treated to. It will be very interesting to see how Shaw responds to this now. Like I said earlier, he, it's new territory for him, but he's been in situations like this before. Maybe not recent, in recent times, but uh, knowing Charles, he'll ignore, he'll ignore the scoreline and he'll probably try and play his game. And I think Fakhri will probably do the same. They both are very capable players and they both have got the skill and the temperament of the highest, highest quality. Both very mature players, indeed. Um, Fakhri leads one frame to zero, short break. We've got a nice full house of spectators here today. It's it's good to see. For those that uh, are still close by, you still have an opportunity to come. There's still a few seats available. Don't miss this exciting snooker. Make your way to the to Gold Reef City Casino. It's in the bullion room. And if not, get onto the streams. Tell your friends about it and get onto 360 TV. I'm not too sure. I think it'll be on DS TV also, but later. At 2.30, it will be live on DSTV on channel 265. 265 or 263, is it? 263, 263. apologies. 263, yeah. yes, you're quite correct, Munir. Oh, Fakhri making a bit of a hash of that safety. Hitting it a little bit too thick. He was aiming to hit the back fine and trickle onto the cushion. He hit it a bit too thick and his left shawl up with the red, so a little bit of work to get the white to the pink. He may opt going for the blue as well. Safer option for him, yeah. oh, he's gone right to the ball colors. Well, he was one. a bit handicapped on, on his cue, uh, cue action there, uh, uh, cueing over the ball, so perhaps making sure on the pot and Nothing oh. wrong with going with the bulk colors to continue with the break. Yes, and it helps you get more control back into your game. Both players have played a few games on this table and they've performed very well on this table. I think Shaw oh. has made both his centuries on this table, Farad. I'm sure he's made both his centuries on this table. Yesterday he had a couple of 75s, so they're both used to this table. Fakhri struck form yesterday on, the, on this table for the first time. So we've seen them both perform really well on this table, so I don't think the table conditions are foreign to them anymore. Given the caliber of the players, I don't think they, they climatize quite quickly. And we would, I, I believe, see a century in this match, if would, not more. I would hope more to see. More than one. It will be great snooker if we can. It all depends. Are the players going to take the conservative approach or attack? Oh. But they will be. They will be chasing that bonus break that has been announced. Uh, the organizers of the tournament announced a 10,000 rin uh, prize money f if you can make a break above 110. So that's good incentive for both these uh, these men, these gentlemen, to try and break the 108 that was set by Kiyosh and Woodley in the earlier rounds. Certainly is a an excellent incentive. The previous shot by Charles, you, if one gets it a millimeter one. off, we could see that that pocket is very unforgiving. You have to be actually very, very precise and just a momentary lapse in concentration, you could miss uh, yeah. otherwise a straightforward pot. Yes, if you just touch the wrong edge of the pocket, it stays out, you know. It, 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 they are unforgiving for us. They look big at times, but they're not. These guys are very skillful and they've got good Six. ability to make things look easy. Fakhri certainly looking very, very composed around the Seven. table. He has a certain, um, displaying a certain amount of hunger, I believe. Um, this title has evaded him and for him especially, I think he deserved a lot better going into the he pack was, of the blue. He was Munir. very unlucky. He was very unlucky. He got that double kiss back 
If he did not, he was on an easy red, and that uh, that made him go back to the side cushion. And that will be the end of his break. Yes. And try and place the white ball in a Not safe a position. The balls are quite open now, so whoever gets in first has got a really good chance of making a substantial break here. The black is a bit tied up, and the pink is tied up, so it's going to be very challenging to free those balls to ensure that a big break is made. Shaw very solid in his technique of the cushion. A great pot. One. That was an excellent, easy. excellent pot, and he has now put himself in prime position to put on a sizable break. He's just got to try and free the black and the pink. He will be looking at one of the reds. He's already looking at that to try and come from behind to open that shot. That's not what he wanted. He wanted to, his intention was go, to go into the black. I think he may have caught uh, the jaw of the center oh, pocket. Definitely there. Um, and with a bit of side there. With a bit of side in. He didn't kick quite the way he wanted off the side rail. That's not too bad. He's still on a red. He's just got work to do with the white. I think he'll draw the skew back, ball back. He's quite good at it and land on the blue. Runs a bit short. Five. Yes, not not getting his cue right underneath the ball there, but uh, still getting quite close to the blue. But knowing Shaw, he will be attacking the shot because the balls are open. Come oh, up. he's very capable. Yeah. He would uh, want to clear this table. That's uh, that's what's on his mind. Without he doesn't want Fakhri back at the table at all. Without a doubt. And look at that great shot. Very smooth, excellent white ball control. Great stuff. Charlie's. Look at it. Ten. Good, good action straight through and nice head down. Eleven. Now he's looking at his different options. He, he might choose to go into the pink just to try and free up a little bit. Because there are a few reds that he could take into the center. He's possibly looking at that. Oh, he's... Just a bit unlucky, but I think he's, he's done a good job in in half freeing it, not fully freed. He's taken some of the obstructing reds away, but he'll have a, he's got his work now cut out for him because he's going to have to use the blue for a while. Doesn't look like the pink can go in any pocket except the top right hand corner pocket at the bottom. Actually, sorry, the bottom right hand pocket. Seventeen. But he'd want to continue with the break keep the scoreboard ticking and he wouldn't mind yes. only potting blues on this yeah. break. He just needs to get onto the top side of the blue. He keeps running a bit short. But I'm sure they'll they'll get the feel of the table very soon. Okay. And that is a surprise by his standard. I thought he would easily go up and down through bulk. And unfortunately for him, kiss on the red would potentially mean, well, the end of a break. But with those two red balls hanging over the corner pocket, he m he has to go for the pot because yes. he wouldn't be able to get a good safety. And it looks like he is attempting one of those shots. Yes. Not easy because he was queuing from the cushion very far away. And uh, he's, left the, he's left the table up now. Look at that shot again. Yeah. 
you cannot uh, catch the jaw. You've got to hit it in the middle, otherwise it doesn't go in. One. And Fakhri's got an opportunity here now. Fakhri's got a great chance to, to make a break and do something. Wow. I think he'll be disappointed in himself. Fakhri, one. Not potting the green. Not capitalizing. At all. A good opportunity. And uh, I feel that Charles is going to take this opportunity. He got let off there. Like the way Charles playing it, the black might be able to go into the left pocket for Rod. I think with a small drawback yeah. on the white, he will certainly be on the black. Mm. So by the looks of it, not he was coming back for the blue. Charles is throwing his whole arm in. He's normally a very good cuist for the rest. I think you're quite right. He put a lot of power in there trying to draw the white back to the blue. And in doing so, uh, missed the pot. Yeah. So now Fakhri is getting another opportunity here. Getting a bit of a, a kiss that was unintended under the yellow. But, but the yellow is the ball that he might pot to put him into the break. Into a prime position to, to make a sizable break. Oh, goodness. You see that pocket was the blind pocket. And, and he usually very good at those uh, cutbacks. Yeah. He might have just played it a bit in a hurry, I think. He didn't even size it up properly. Well, I think this is a bit of uh, both players getting adequate opportunity and table time. Yeah. A uh, bit of a seesaw. Just a bit of nerves also for Rod, both being in the final. And with uh, the amount of spectators we got there and being live on TV, so you can expect the nerves to be a little bit in there. If it's not, then uh, the adrenaline will be rushing. If there's no nerves, then it'll, there'll be there's something wrong. They should be feeling a little bit of nerves, not pressure, just a bit of the adrenaline rush, you know. You certainly need that at yes. this big stage here. Yeah. So who's going to compose himself first? to take this frame because this frame is very open. I think both of them actually are very composed. A few unforced errors by both players, but um, they will take a little bit more time on uh, their shot selection and ensure they don't make these unforced errors going forward. But oh. they don't look nervous no, no, at all. I think they both very accomplished players. They certainly are no stranger to the big stage. Well, that was a good shot by Shaw. Good pot uh, uh, once again. Laying just a bit short uh, on running. the blue. Yes, always he needs to be a lot side. higher. Always landing on the bottom side. He needs to land on the top side. Just hasn't had a feel for the table yet. But a lovely shot to get Make back amends, into. Recommends, certainly. Yeah. Up and down through bulk. Okay. And opens up a 22-point lead on Fakhri. Is he going to use his opportunity to kiss into the black to stay on the pink? might do so. It certainly would seem to be the right shot. And that's always the risk. If 11. you don't hit it full enough, then you put yourself in trouble. You put yourself in trouble. And he would certainly, I think, go for a safety shot uh, instead of going for that black to the center pocket. The degree of difficulty on that pot, he would do himself no favors by going for that pot. He would go for safety and get the white ball into bulk. Yes, he's not going to squander the little lead that he's built up. This is Shaw's conservative approach this whole week. He's not given any player Shaw a cap. Leaving. Every time he was 
in a position where you could jeopardize his lead, he would rather play safety. But a good shot, nevertheless. Charles Jonk with a 23-point lead with 51 points left on the table. And Fakhri, look at that. What a magnificent shot. Magnificent cueing by Fakhri Khirdin. He backs himself, Munir. He backs himself. Yes, he always does. And when his long game is on, he's one of the most dangerous players on circuit. Just getting hey. a bit of a kiss on that red. Just not allowing him to come back enough for this red. relying totally on Aye. the pace of the ball to get him out of trouble and into position. I think that initial long red shows the confidence that he has and he's backing himself and backing his ability to, to, to pot those long balls without a moment of uh, indecisiveness. He may have overrun this just a tad. Yes, or even underrun. If you ran a little bit Possibly. more, Possibly. Could have still potted it. So he's still in trouble because uh, there's no control over where this red is going. And a lovely little lucky kiss for him there. <laughs> so we're going to see a bit of a battle with safeties here on this game, I think, to see who's going to secure this frame. Fakhri reduced the deficit to nine points. So he's right in there. He's right in here, and Charles is wary of that. He would protect this red very effectively. He's very good at that. That was the danger of that shot, trying to get the white behind the black. Always the double kiss being on. And he also got away with one there, because that kiss could have always ended up in front of the, in front of the bag. Mind you, he's left a bit of a double attempt for Fakhri, I, but think I Fakhri think will run that white into bulk yes, going definitely. for the double trying to get it yeah certainly behind the brown and this looks like a this looks like a good shot might be a couple of millimeters short Muni that's an excellent shot we are being treated to world class snooker right here okay, yeah, at Gold Roof City and um, Charlie in a bit of trouble here definitely he's going to have to come out very nicely yeah he, he might attempt to swerve but maybe not i think he'll use the cushion there's no doubt that he has the ability to come up with snooker but that's not his concern he oh wants yeah. to get the red ball safe and perhaps even go and attempt to pot this red it's not going to be easy not easy but i think so <laughs> excellent That was an excellent shot by uh, Charles getting out and leaving the red ball safe. But Return good, safety. But a good fortune for him there. And, but he's back in trouble now. But the ball being close to the red uh, means that he can actually hit it a bit firm and get it away from the white. Very uncharacteristic sort of shot selection there by uh, Charles. Definitely. Maybe wanting to hit that red very full on. And um, I would have thought you would have gone off the side cushion being the shorter route. Uh, now the, the referee going to place the pink in the correct place. Yes. See, going off the side cushion, he might have a danger of possibly going in off. That's why he's not choosing the side cushion option. But he's he can actually play it with more accuracy, being close to the ball. So he's taking the, the more difficult option. 
Maybe you also bought it. I was just going to say that he bought it. Oh, wow. sure. that, that was an excellent pot. But and a luck. very unlucky cue ball. All right, viewers watching us on the live stream, we are preparing to go live on channel 263 Cape Town TV. We'll be back in a moment. A very good afternoon to all you Cape Town TV viewers. We're coming to you live from Gold Reef City, where we're enjoying the Pro Snooker Championship, and we're broadcasting to you live for the first time in 30 years. Wow, what a feat. So we're enjoying the match between Shal Yonk and Fakri Hirden. I'm going to invite you to sit back, relax, as I hand you over back to the commentary team. Forty. Welcome to our viewers on DSTV, Cape Town TV. You are with myself, Farah James, and my colleague, Munir Kesem. We'll be your commentators on this fourth edition of our Pro Stem Snooker Championships held at Gold Reef City in the Bullion Room. And we are at the finals with two phenomenal players, Mr. Charles Yonk and Fakhri Khirdin. Welcome to our viewers on Cape Town TV. And we're pleased that you are with us this afternoon to enjoy a spectacle of snooker right here in Johannesburg. Yes, uh, people, we are currently already in the, in the second frame. And uh, as you can see on the, on the score in front of you, the first game, Fakhri has uh, taken it. Uh, he leads by one frame to zero. And the second frame, Shaul Jonk had a sizable lead. Uh, Fakhri managed to come back. Surely had a piece of bad luck uh, on, on coming out of a snook on the last red. He went in off and Fakhri spotted the yellow to, to blue to lead Shaul needing a snooker. So if Shaul, oh, what a great thing that Shaul gets to play snooker and this is exactly what he needs to try and be competitive in the train again. Mr. Fakhri Khirdin from Gauteng, multiple SA singles champion, pairs champion, current South African classic champion and six reds, Belt. former six red champion as well, so no stranger to national titles. His opponent, Charles Yonk, has won this event uh, three consecutive times. Certainly one of our top players in South Africa and he's made this event his own. Fakhri looking to win his maiden title, pro snooker title, here in Johannesburg. So we're in for an absolute treat and an epic battle will ensue between these uh, two players. Uh, Munir, I wouldn't put my money on anyone at this stage. It's a very difficult one to call, both very competent players. Yes, definitely, Farad. Uh, just talking about that snooker that Charles got, it was a very good snooker and a very tricky shot for Fakhri to get out of. I was surprised that Fakhri played it so quickly. I would have thought he would have had longer to think about it and uh, he's given Charles a, a chance to come back into this game. Charles was facing a 2-0 deficit right at the start but uh, if he can put this long ball, long black in, he's got a chance to level the match. So he's got all to play for and nothing to lose. I think he would back himself going for the spot or playing it perhaps, cautiously. Perhaps putting the, the black ball into bulk on the, on the cushion? No, he's going for that pot. He's playing it cautiously. He didn't uh, want to leave the white right through. He dug into the cue ball. You're quite right. He wants to protect his white and keep it close to the, the black cushion. I think Fakhri will have a dip at this. Oh. Almost misses it. And uh, Almost misses it, but gets the back end of the ball. Luckily and uh, if he had missed it, it would have been uh, the end of the frame and leaving Charles in a quite a favorable position to seal the second frame and level second matters. Second opportunity on the black. 
fancy salt to put this one in. Oh my word, that was very far away from the pocket. But uh, Charles got lucky. Well, uh, when you're a black ball duel is very nerve wracking. It is, it can um, be. It is very, uh, Fakhri will go this. His cutbacks have been excellent. Oh, he opts for an excellent safety, playing a bit of responsible snooker. Charles was mm. quite far of the mark. I mean, just a, a little bit of nerve creeping in there. And that was an excellent safety by Shaw. So we're going to see a nice battle here on the black. Fakhri getting a double kiss and a bit fortuitous getting the, the black ball in the safe Onto position. The cushion, yes, definitely. And Would Shaw be tempted on going for a double? No, you think I not on the black ball at this I stage? Think he'll play it on the side cushion and try to try to get the black to the bottom cushion. Hopefully to the middle. That will be his attempt. But you never know. Yes. And and he went for it. He went for the double. I th I thought he was contemplating that, and unfortunately, as we've just witnessed. If you don't get it spot on, you don't know where the black ball is going to lie. And this Fakhri. is exactly why most of the pros opt not to, not to put a double on the black unless it's a certain double. Unfortunately for Shaw there, the double cost him. It came back, it caught the cushion and Fakhri sealed the game. So this 2-0 deficit for Shaw is going to be a bit challenging for him. He seems a little bit nervy. He's just got to get his composure back there. He had two opportunities on the black and he did not take it. And this will make Fakhri stronger, Farad. He's going to get stronger from this position. Munir, th this is certainly unfamiliar territory for Shah. Definitely. His previous matches, he's won 3-5-0 um, uh, and 5-1. He's conceded one frame, I believe, mm. en route to the final. And finding himself 2-0 down in the final is very unfamiliar territory. Definitely. But he certainly has the composure. Um, we will now go to a commercial break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our final at Goldridge City, the fourth installment of our Pro Snooker Circuit. We see Fakhri Khirdin challenging our defending champion, Charles Yonk. He currently leads 2-0 in the best of 13 match. Yes, uh, for Rabbi Mr. Swimmer is actually not the defending champion. This is the fourth in the fourth event, the fourth in the series of the Pro Circuit events. So this is the first uh, Gold Reef City event. Correct. He, this is the, the first yeah. Gold Reef City event, but yes. in the Pro Snooker calendar, he's won. Yes, Charles has won every event. He's won every event. Yes. And uh, we can Players see. Players are entering the arena. See the spectators catching up on uh, their cell phones and maybe looking at the live stream. Third frame. Fakhri leads two frames to zero, Fakhri to break. Yeah, we have s the Stefan Stienkamp, the, the referee, officiating in his first final. And Fakhri gets us underway in the third frame. 
with an orthodox break-off, getting the white ball into bulk and putting it as close as possible to the bulk cushion. I see Fakhri was uh, taking a sip of the Mayday juice, so the sponsor will be very happy that the players are are drinking some of his juice, Mr. Diamutli. Shal goes for the opening red and um, leaves Fakhri up. And he's got to be careful not to do that. Fakhri is looking extremely One. comfortable around the table and he won't hesitate at the first opportunity that presents uh, is presented to him and very capable of of taking this frame at a single visit. Definitely. And he's he's got this look in his eye where he's not uh, he's not going to let up Six. at any moment. Charles going to have to start playing his game if he wants to challenge Fakhri in any way. And that's exactly what we're talking about. When Seven. Fakhri puts his long balls and his long game is on, he is absolutely dangerous. I tell you, he doesn't miss many, but let's look at that white ball control. Perfect on the black. He'll do a s small stun to hold for the other red. And he's on the other red. And he'll run his white ball through. 40. And stay, or probably a small stun here as well, to Just hold that white for the black. A little bit high. 50. Perfect. And he's primed for a, a lovely break. I'll probably look at the red closest to him in the in the pack there, just to nudge maybe into the reds to stay on that. Oh, he wants to nudge into that red, and he just went too far past it. Certainly wants to hit the stop his use the red to stop his white ball, and just ran past the and red and may opt to to cut this ball on the right hand side and run his white ball back into bulk, and keep shall safe. I would be very surprised if he goes for the double in there. No, he goes he for the He does exactly safety. that. Ops for a safety shot. Bakhri's 22. And he had a great opportunity to make a break there. Didn't take it. It's, uh, it's funny, sometimes in the finals you don't see the biggest breaks because both players choose the conservative approach. And one, one slight error can change a potential big break into a small break. But still playing very good snooker. And not leaving one another up much. Look at that. They, they're tightening the screws on one another. Two very experienced campaigners. So we have a bit of an exchange of a safety battle. Well, we're making a slight mistake on his safety there. Well, it's important to note uh, when one goes for safety, you know, you've got to look at the, the pack and look for possible cannons in that instance. Well, that was very difficult to pick up, to be quite honest. Yes. So I w you wouldn't have picked up uh, that cannon in the red ball. So um, presenting Charles with an opportunity. One. Early in this frame, Fakhri only has a 22-point lead. But if you look at their safeties, they keep on running short. They don't get to the bulk very many times. I just need to be striking that ball more sweetly to get the white tucked underneath the bottom cushion. But this is not an easy black for Shaw, and it's it's a bit of a pressure black because if he misses, he might be leaving Fakhri up if he chooses to go into the reds. If not, it's a free shot going down to the bottom of the table. But it looks like he wants to develop another red. Oh, what an excellent shot. That was a very challenging black, and he pulled it off. Uh, seamlessly, Eight. very composed. Nine. Shaw already looking better this game. He knows he he messed up that last game. He he was he was out of the game and he brought himself back in, and he did not take his opportunity. But he's looking good here. Just got to keep. And there in the background, sitting on that beautiful Gold Reef uh, City uh, chair, in the background we can see Mr. Kiran Singh. 
That's the manager of Gold Reef City Casino, is he? Yes, he's yeah. the operational director of Gold yeah. City. Next to him, CEO of Pro Snooker, Mr. Cuban Mudley. Yeah. Um, and those two gentlemen are responsible for putting this event together. And what a fantastic job they've done. Uh, so, 17. many thanks to Kiran Singh and our CEO of Pro Snooker, Mr. Cuban Mudley. Um, this is the first for South Africa in 30 years having live South African snooker on, on TV. And the setup, I must say, uh, Munir, is... It's world-class, right? World-class setup. It's world-class. I'll be forgiven if I was watching a matchroom production and watching a UK championship. Exactly. The, 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 the cinema quality, the, the picture quality is amazing. The, the angle of the table, it's, it's exactly what you see overseas. I think if we show this to Jason Ferguson uh, on the WPB, I say you'll be pretty impressed with what he sees here. Yes, he certainly would be. Uh, Charles Young looking very, very comfortable. He is uh, reduced or eroded Fakhri's lead. He leads by two points now in this frame. I wonder if... I don't think he'll allow Fakhri to get back to the table. He'll want to finish it with this visit. It's just going to be a tricky red here on this one, a better side. We played it very well. He needed to play it with a better check side. But just a bit unlucky. I think he just got a bit unlucky. He needed to run the ball just a little bit more to get to that outer red. red. So, but maybe he can still see the one next to the pink. I think he can. He can pot the ball. Certainly potable. Yeah. Not easy, but uh, he is going to go for it because he's in his stride now. Excellent pot. Very composed. Yeah. Pot. One can see when Shaw slows himself down and concentrates and looking at every angle and every possible option. This is when he's concentrating and this is when he's at his best. Yeah, he'd be thinking two or three balls ahead. He would now be considering either cutting this blue ball into the center pocket but perhaps going into the yellow pocket and staying on the red closest to the, the cush or cushion or draw back to the two reds below the pink money? Probably yes. He needs to put one of those reds to free the other three reds. And opting to kiss on there. And I think he's, he's played it almost perfect. I think he's on that red. Yes, yes he is on that red. Is. So it's a tremendous shot that he played there. What is he going to do? Is he going to hold back for the pink? If the pink can go in the right corner, he might just hold it, but I don't think the pink can go, so it'll opt to go for the blue. And he's on the Seven. top side of the blue. Now, he's, he's a lot more composed. Definitely. We've seen him run short, and now getting that white on the high side of the blue. Uh, this man is extremely focused now. He'd want to... To finish up on this to visit. To finish this frame and reduce the, the frames to frame deficit by one. I was just saying that I think he must have might do? have overran the ball a little bit, but he's still got the option to the centre back. If he so chooses, he might choose the centre back. Now he's looking at the, the ball closest to the pink into the right corner and catching a slight nudge on the other red to hold on to the pink. And what a great shot. Perfect what a great pace. Shot. What a great shot. Perfect pace, pocket pace, ball drops in and he's, he, he's on the pink. And the break moves up to 43 now. Still has a bit of work to do. Possible 67 still on the table. So he would ideally be looking to take another four reds to make the frame safe. It's not going to be easy because there are two reds close to the cushion. One on the top cushion, one on the one close to the side cushion on the right. So it's going to be very difficult to finish off 49. on this visit. But he is well capable of that. He might develop one of the reds. He's definitely going to take on this red and try and get an angle onto the black. He would hold for the black and then lay a bit high. 
allowing him an opportunity to then pot the black and, and play the red on the black cushion. But he's a bit straight on this one. Yes, he might He want, may, he might he may run off the side rail and, and pot the red closest to the pink there, perhaps. Yes, oil. Ah, yes. a small stun in the red into the center pocket. Ah, he goes for the... For the corner pocket, For the yes. corner pocket, yes. He'll play a soft stun screw now Seven. to hold on to the pink, hopefully, on the shot. He has two options. He may go for the black as well. Oh, goodness. Seven. And you know, Munir, up to that point, he looked absolutely composed. Yeah. He must have been in two minds. You know, you mentioned a that, run uh, through pink or, or the black. So he was in two minds. One. And it's very important to note when you're at the table yeah. and in this game of snooker, when you commit, yes. go for the shot you've yes. committed to, no second guesses. And yes. that that will, will show in that miss of Charles Young. But look, yeah, he's, he's got a sizable lead and Fakhri's got some work to do to to try and make inroads into the game. And the reds that are on the table are not in the easiest positions. Hey. So he's got a lot of work to do yet to fight back into this game. Mind you, it's only it's 27 points behind, so he's well capable of coming back. What an position. excellent pot uh, by Fakhri. He didn't even look like missing any fences. He, he, the concentration you can see on his face. Yeah. He'd find himself in a very difficult position to develop those two reds now on the on the rails, Munir. Yeah, he'll he may opt to take the, the points and, and, and play his safety. Uh, he'll screw the blue back and he'll have a go at this red. If I know Fakhri, he'll have a go at this red. He's looking up at, at, uh, at us. He must have heard me. <laughs> <laughs> he'll do very well to pot this. Yesterday he was banging them in. Today he's choosing to play it softer. Yeah, the de degree of difficulty in potting this ball, yeah, is certainly quite capable. Yes. <sighs> but right now, the disappointment look at the on table, his face. <laughs> the table, uh, Shaw is still 21 points in the lead. So, potting this, and maybe I think he'll, he'll leave himself in a good position on the last red to seal the frame, yeah. And he's got high on the black. He'll drop the black in and lay perfectly on the red against the cushion and would. So now, not miss this opportunity to wrap up this frame. So, a bit of a reprieve for Shaw so that he can put his first frame on the board. He'll not be hitting this too hard, he'll want to make sure on this ball because this is all he needs for Fakhri to hey. need snookers. Even if he pots it and rolls up on the black, he'll choose to do that. Or he might just run through and make sure. There we are. He's choosing to be Nine. positive. And that red is the frame ball. Fakhri would requ uh, require snookers now. There's... Well, Charles is still at the table. He's got a 30-point lead. Play a nice shot of two cushions to come back between the yellow and brown to get position or not. He's choosing the one cushion play. Oh, what a lovely gentle stroke. Gentle stroke. Yeah. And making sure the pot, because he didn't concentrate too much on the position, if you look at that shot. But that was important, because uh, it, it means now Fakhri needs uh, three snookers. 37 points ahead, and uh, remaining points on the table is only 27. Uh, I don't think Fakhri will get back to the frame. Thank well, what, what a, a beautiful pot by Charles. He certainly won't get up from his chair after that pot on the yellow by Charles, and would concede this frame. Excellent snooker, excellent display from Shaw, and a bit of a fight back from him. So this match is turning out to be an epic battle. Fakhri Khilzin still leading by two frames to one. After, after the stream, I'm sure you'll be conceding. Shaw, 18. And he has, and Frank. there we have it. Fakhri leads two frames to one. But 
unlucky there, close spot. frame, Fahri leads two frames to one, short to break. All right, we're back on our fourth frame and Shaw Leong to break. And he now goes enough. Four. Just uh, dug in too much into the ball or maybe too little. Fakhri Hildin has an early opportunity there and he slots in a very good long pot. And he'll be looking to make amends for the last game where he had a chance to actually win the frame from Shaw. So he'll be looking to, to get in and make an early break. Playing very attacking and missing the black. One uh, sometimes uh, tends to underestimate the degree of difficulty when you're putting a bit of screw and side into the pack to try and pot the black and develop the balls at the same time. It makes the, the, the potting angle a bit more difficult. It narrows it down and sometimes you end up hitting a bit of too much power and it, and it stops the ball from dropping in the intended pocket. So Fakhri will be ruining that mistake because he was in a perfect position. Shaw contemplating what to do here and how to go about making a sizable break. And Shaw doing the right thing, choosing to rather take the loose reds first. Six. Welcome back, Farad. Thank you, Munir. So, Charles presented with the first opportunity here, Munir. No, actually, you just missed it. Uh, Fakhri had the first opportunity and uh, he did not take his chance. He there were a few reds, a few reds lose, and he opted to go straight into the pack. And playing with power, power inside is always risky. Seven. Excellent pot there by Charles Young. Yes. Leaving him a choice of the blue or pink. So Shaw will be taking this opportunity. He knows he was let off. Fakhri was in prime position to, to make a, a sizable break. He'll be looking to now do something. Looking to see where the pink goes. Doesn't look like the pink in spot. So it's Probably spot on the black yes, spot. Definitely. Excellent. Oh, he does spot. Excellent positional. Oh, I, don't, I don't think he expected spot. it to spot. I don't think he expected it to spot. Thank you. 14. He continues with the break, leaves himself on the brown. He's got to find a way to open up the black ball tied uh, he's going up for with the, the red. He's choosing to go for While the yellow. I think he wants to go into this back, Munir. Yes, he's Would definitely. be a very aggressive shot. And look, 
Well, I think you want to do, do exactly what I said early on, to open the black ball that he's yes. tied up with the red. And unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. Missed the pot, but I don't think he left much on unless that red can go into the, the center red, pocket. The red to the center definitely goes. In, in potting, that's Fakhri can develop the pink and hopefully get it into play. So he'll be looking to do that. S certainly there seems... Oh. oh, that was his intention, but obviously just playing it a bit hard. A bit firm. A red miss in the center pocket by Fakhri. He's usually very, very solid on those shots. And But... Not really leaving anything on for Charles. He's got to play this red fine and send the white ball up into bulk. And in doing so, frees the black ball. Excellent shot. And uh, th that's what the top players always look to do. Get yes. the black into play to maximize the break. But don't be surprised if Fakhri goes for the shot. If he doesn't look at it, I'll be surprised. Because he might... It might be a shot that he can attempt and not leave too much up if he misses it. Oh, he plays it with lots of power. And uh, because of that, he misses the pot, but still doesn't leave much up. I think he got very fortunate there, Munir. The degree of difficulty in potting this ball. He certainly backs himself. He's been slotting a lot of these in, uh, in the lead up to him reaching the final. And that may play on his mind, missing yeah. He's missed a couple long of long shots, yes. Correct, correct. So the, if he's presented with another one, a bit of doubt may creep in. A very composed shot by Charles, keeping his head very still on that shot and making what? sure in potting that ball. Little stun on the green to get the position on the red in the center bag. And perfect position. Perfect positional shot. So he'll be looking to Four. get back onto he'll be looking to get onto the black. And uh, probably try and swing around and come on the other side for an open red on the left of the pack. There Five. we are. That's, that angle seems to be perfect. So and, and when he gets his white ball in a perfect position, he's an excellent break builder. Yes. And, and Fakhri would find himself in trouble um, if Shal flows the way he flow, he's yes. flowing now. He's getting uh, that white ball in pinpoint position, laying a bit of high on the black. You'll get the black on the spot, allowing himself to get a natural angle for his white ball to... Uh, get position on the red below the pack. Yeah, he'll play a soft, soft screw shot, and he's perfect on the red. Jeff. Mm. Very interesting shot that he took there. I would have thought he'll run through for the black. Yeah, I think he laid it just a bit low, and he didn't yeah. have the natural angle. And uh, the yellow would bring him back into play. But it's a little bit off angle. But it's there is a red on the side of the of that little cluster of reds that can go, or he'll he might put it back for the for the red into the same pocket where he's attempting the yellow. So he's got an option here. I think he'll opt for a soft stun because it red below the pack does go. Yes, it does go. Does exactly that. Yeah. Look at the action replay. Nice, nice soft action. His head is perfectly still. Nice follow through. Beautiful camera angle of the shot that he just played. He's already contemplating, looking into exactly where he wants to go into the pack. 
So in potting this ball, he wants to get a perfect angle on the black. But he's left himself a bit too straight or so very slight angle to go into the back. So he'll rather be looking to come back to this little loose red that's over here. I think that would certainly be the shot. He, he, he left himself a little bit too straight. An excellent shot coming through the balls. Coming through off two cushions and onto the loose red. So this is where he'll have to get you, a perfect angle on the black to go back into the pack. Certainly, he wouldn't want to make the same mistake. So he yes. wants to uh, lay a bit low on this black. Yes. It's giving him an opportunity to go into the pack. The nice thing is he doesn't have to do too much with the white ball. And he can focus on just controlling it. He may use the pink perhaps, Munir. Oh my goodness. Oh, 24. that ball almost looked like it missed. He has left himself, but not too much of an angle. Yeah, but I think that um, he has sufficient angle. He's got tremendous cue power. Yes. He's got tremendous cue power, and he would certainly use this opportunity to go in the pack. And if he doesn't, it would mean the end of the break. So he'll he's a very attacking player. He'll be trying to match the reds on the left to develop. Oh, he's rather going off the cushion. Oh, what an excellent shot. Great shot. Great shot. You see the angle is very straight to go direct into the back. Yeah. Opting to go with more Step power right. off the cushion. That shows he's got a lot of confidence to play a shot like that. Charles attempted a long ball like this earlier. Let's see if he'll get this one right. And missing it again. This was similar to the black he missed in the previous game. If you remember when he needed a snooker. That is correct. And that would be going through his mind. Without a doubt. You know, you miss one... You fancy yourself a chance on the second one. If you miss the second one, it starts playing back in your mind when you present it with the third opportunity. He's got to now put it out of his mind. And um, Fakhri is very fortunate to get back to the table. Charles Yonk has a lead of 40 points. But more than enough points available on the table for Fakhri to clinch his frame. He need to play a good opening red to get back in. Excellent pot. Excellent pot from Fakhri. One. I was mentioning yesterday in the commentary that uh, Charlie is one of the few South Africans uh, that played in the World Championships. Uh, and I said he played in the World Under-21 and, and I spoke to him about it today. And he actually Six. played in the, in the World Championships, he and Mutalib. They went to Amsterdam. And he was 24 years old. He was the first South African of, from Seven. the modern era to make a century in an IBSF tournament. He made a beautiful 129 in that event. Wow, what an achievement. And that was at a uh, young age of 24 years old. So he's been a prolific century maker from, those, from, a, from a young age. And saying that, look at Fakhri. He's now showing some real positive intent Stop. here. The balls are lying in a very favorable position for him to pull back on that lead. He would use this red to uh, open the pink and the other red there, or not. He's waiting for an opportunity. But playing very good, uh, sensible snooker, taking yes. the loose reds that are on, putting points on the board because he is behind. And, and he realizes he had to do that earlier. Now, it's a perfect shot. In putting this ball, he frees that last red to the same corner back. But I think the red may, may go into that corner 20. if he lays... He'll play probably for the blue here, Munir. Yes, probably for and the blue. And give himself a, an angle to... And this time he runs short on the blue. He but does. But he's got a red at the bottom to play a recovery shot and come back up top. A little bit high on the red, but it is possible with a nice, a nice choke. Well, he's certainly going for it. Lovely shot. Beautiful stroke. And he's left himself a perfect angle in the brown to get back to the last red. He's in a prime position now for Art to pinch his frame from Executes from that, that, that pot with absolute precision. 
and the red does pot into the corner pocket. And I would fancy him clearing the table and clinching this frame. Thank you too. Potting that red ball with absolute confidence. Yes, he's... he's, he's and I want you to witness... I think Fakhri is one of the best cues with regard he's to the control bit, of the bit, white ball. A little bit straight on the ball, but he will play it with side. There we are. Look at it. Nice. Check side, draw back. And... Um, 39. On this type of shot, for the viewers that are watching, you've got to play an extreme amount of left-hand side. So when it hits the cushion, the side reverses and it skids off the cushion. 41. And we has made an excellent pot on the yellow. It's got a little bit of a tricky green, but it is potable. And he's reduced the deficit, eroded Charles' uh, lead. So he would need up to the blue ball and the frame would be... Yes, uh, if he pots up to the blue, that's correct. It'll be 14 points difference, eh? So he needs the... Uh, he no, it'll be 13 yeah. points difference, so... Well, he's one ahead. He would need, he would need the pink two. Sakri 41. He would need the pink two because uh, from the green to the blue would be 12 points. So the pink will be needed to secure the frame. Mm. And Shaw needs... Shaw would need actually up to the pink also. As well. And oh. look at this. A bit of good fortune for sure. Well, that's how the balls roll sometimes. Uh, Munir yes. gets a game of snooker. Yes, and if you look at it now, he's, he's not in a perfect position to clean up, but uh, one good pot, and the frame is back in his favour. No, and that was not easy for Rod. That was not easy. Shall I would have thought that Charles would have opted for safety, but I suppose when you're in that position, you got to... Take your opportunity and 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 go for the frame. Eh? These guys are very positive. They would rather mm. play an attacking safety, so pot and leave your white in a more or less safe position. But look at it. Look at that Fakhri also. Opting. Absolutely amazing, Munir. What a great oh, pot! You do not get better than that. Yes, great pot, great pot. He may have laid just over end that. Uh, but excellent position on the blue, but unfortunately just a bit low to get on the pink. He needs he needs the pink. He needs the pink. Opting rather to just Nine. to screw back and maybe attempt the long pot, but I don't think he's going to go you for know, the pot. You know, Munir, the previous two shots, he missed those pots. I wonder if that will be playing on his mind. See, and he was playing again with safety in mind, pulling the white back. But the pink just followed him right to it. So he's a bit in trouble. Because from where I'm sitting, I, I can see that the re, uh, the pink goes into the middle. And Shaul just has to run through. And, and he might... But not an easy shot, Munir, with a white ball on the, the ball easy. cushion. Not easy, not easy. But he would go for it. Six. What a great pot. What an excellent shot. And now gives himself an excellent opportunity to level matters in this match. It's not the easiest of blacks, but uh, Shaw is well capable of, of potting this. Playing it very positive Five. and making a good fight back in this match. So Fahri squandered his good chance that he created for himself. It's becoming a very interesting tussle going forward. All right, welcome viewers to anyone that has just joined us. You are watching the Pro Snooker Championships here at the Bullion Room in Gold Reef City. Pure Josie, Pure gold. Our two finalists, uh, Mr. Fahri Khirdin, the th uh, number three ranked player on the pro snooker circuit, against the defending champion uh, Charles Yonk. He's our number one seed. The game is nicely poised at two frames apiece. Welcome to all our viewers on Cape Town TV, channel 263. We are broadcasting live at from Gold Reef City at the Bullion Room. For those of you that don't know, Fahri Khirdin. He's from Johannesburg. He's playing uh, at the Wanderers Club. He's a 
uh, resident player there. And Charles Yonk is from Port Elizabeth and he plays at the Dias Club, who is also one of his sponsors. As we look, the gentleman you just saw uh, stand up there. He's probably leaving the venue. There he is. Cuban Mudley, followed by Mr. Derek Hawley. They are probably going backstage now in and having the a discussion for the next championship, which would be the UGM Masters. Yes, and Derek Hawley, for those of, of you that don't know, is the is the manager, the owner of uh, United Snooker. That's in Alberton. And Fakhri gets us underway in the fifth frame. And it's on as even with two frames each. It's a reasonably good break of shot. But Shaw looks like he's uh, playing a bit of an attacking shot here. Containing safety, that's what he's doing. Very good shot from him. I think that, uh, I don't know if this match is also going on the shot clock for right. Is this going to be like the other games or is it going to go to the duration of the, the frames that are advertised? They, they do have a, um, I think it's 210 minutes. It might be longer because the frames are 13, best to, of 13. To complete this match, but I think Fakhri needs to, you know, it's very difficult as a snooker player, Muni, to let the last frame go. You've got to put it out of your mind, concentrate. He, I wouldn't say he squandered a two-frame lead. Uh, Charles fought back and level matters. And Fakhri, Fakhri needs to now compose himself and um, let that last frame go. Definitely. And, and uh, he had opportunities in both those games, Farad. He had both opportunities in both those games to, to, to actually snatch it and, and steal it from Charles. But he did not take it. So he'll be ruining his opportunities there. And saying that he is now in an opportunity. He's in a he has got opportunity now to make a a break and, and Well in, in saying yeah. that Munir is <laughs> you're quite right. He's not he's not letting up. He's he's still confident. He's continued his game. It hasn't phased him. No, it won't and phase um, him. It won't phase him at all. Just needs to get get back into his stride. And uh, yes, Munir, this match has a time duration. We just have a little bit over two hours left left for the completion of this match. And I think that's adequate time. These are two quick fire players. Nine. They don't hang around a bit, uh, hang around much. Yeah. And they're very attacking. But if it goes four, four, five, five, the time factor can come into effect. Well, at the rate these guys are going, <laughs> maybe not. Yes. Maybe not. Fakhri is looking uh, like he's got a bit of rhythm here. 16. And the balls are nicely spread for him. He's just got to work his white nicely around the pack and the balls. Contemplating taking the ball to the center, but rather opting for the taking the rest and putting the red on the left of your screen. Where he'll still remain in control in the black ball area. Lovely soft stun shot. Now, what red would he be looking may have, at now? May have, uh, you know, position is white a bit straight on this black. You think? Yes. But with, with Fakhri's Q power and the use of side on the white ball, uh, this won't be proved to be too difficult for him to get onto another red. I don't think so. Yeah, he's looking at red to the center, closest, uh, close to the pink. He's looking at that ball, just just ran a little bit. No, it's actually in perfect position. 24. And he's looking to hold on to the pink. If the pink can go, then it will it'll give him an opportunity to really get into the shot, into the break. You know, it's not always a bad thing for uh, a player to lose perhaps a frame that he should win. It sometimes just spurs him it on. It spurs you on and uh, you get a bit angry with yourself and um, and you can see it in his game now. 
yes, he's yes. probably a bit angry with himself and saying, listen, that's not going to happen again. Yes. I'm going to finish it at the first opportunity I get. Yeah, he's, he's playing with a bit more freedom now. Confidence. Definitely. And have you noticed when Fakhri starts bobbing his head when he's walking around, he's got a slight bob of his head. That, that shows that he's walking around with a bit of confidence. You know, every player has got his own acumen and way of showing that he's confident, and that's his way. 31. The referee doing a meticulous job in placing the pink back on the pink spot. Probably hold for the pink. The pink does pot into the mm. left bottom pocket. Excellent white ball control. Perhaps use this. Has he got the angle to free a few more reds? You'll just want to maybe screw back slightly for the red on the outer side. Oh, he does have the angle. Nudged into I the back. I think he deserved a, lo a lot better. Uh, yeah, he's in a very difficult position now. It depends now. Does the pink come on there and obstruct? Very tight squeeze on that spot, but the referee gets it right. The pink will go on there anyway because there's no other spot available. It, it now, if we if we look at the stable Munir, he can't get a, an easy safety given that red in the bulk. Yes, uh, so so he can't just run up into bulk and yeah, play yeah. safety because if you look at the red on the other side of the brown, and you look at the red on the other side of the black at the bottom of the table. He doesn't have many options. He, he can't even play the ball into the center because th that won't give him any position. So he's got himself in a bit of a pickle here. Definitely. And there isn't any straightforward safety. He would, he would do very well. I think he's going he's gonna to try and leave the white exactly, exactly where, the, where red the red is. That's yes. his only option. Yes, and send the or red one away. Of it, yes, but the, I think the sensible one. Does exactly there that. There we are. Fakhri 38. So Fakhri takes a small lead in, in this fifth frame. The frame scores are two each. Shaw was 2 0 behind. He's made a bit of a comeback and leveled the, the frame scores to two each. Shaw sizing up that plant. And it, it looks, looks pretty straight. It looks very much on. Looks very much, and I don't think Fakhri seen that. Eh? But you know, digging to this white ball, uh, Munir, you could quite easily get this wrong. Oh, and he doesn't. Yeah. Wow. Beautifully and executed. And a good white ball that will allow him to to get back into the stream and and make his own contribution. Charles still 30 points adrift in this uh, frame. So okay. he's got a bit of work to do to get himself back into the frame. Slight soft stun towards the pink. Lovely shot. Nine. And does he have a nice angle to pull back for the last red or he might nudge the red closer to the pocket? There we are. What a lovely touch. So he's on this red into the right hand pocket. He's got an opportunity to 15. to get back into the frame. Yeah, he certainly created that uh, opportunity for himself. Oh my goodness. Munir here again, we witness, <laughs> you know, sometimes the snooker players, the easy ones, we, you need to concentrate a bit more on. He tried to steal a bit of pocket. He did, he did, but tried I don't think there was any need for that. He, yeah, he's you know. just cost him, he's just cost himself a potential, ch potential chance to get back into this game. And Fakhri not making the best yeah. use of that chance. 
by running his white too much away from the pink, but it's he might still put the ball or he opt for the blue. The black is a bit hampered with those reds close to the cushion. He certainly didn't do himself any favors with his white ball positioning here, Munir. Yes, but I think, you know, the way he's been putting the long balls, he will put the blue. There we are, nice and clean oh. pot. The degree of difficulty in potting that blue at this stage of the game. Six. Yeah, and he takes it on with complete confidence. That just shows that he's thinking. Seven. He's thinking very positive. He's uh, again slightly on the wrong side. On the wrong side of the blue. But uh, there is a red on the ball color on the, in the ball end to get back into the other area. So he'll want wow. to screw back slightly to the brown and maybe try and develop that red that's there. 13. Perfect. Well, he's got to put points on the board now. Yes. He's, um, he's got to try and take this frame away from Shao. Well, he's well poised to do so. Mm -hmm. He has a 36 point lead. And he's another three, another two, with this brown and another two reds to secure the frame with two high colors. Oh, he's choosing to go for the yellow. An excellent X. pot. Look at that white ball control, Munir. He, he went for a more difficult pot. Yes, to get, to get good position. To get good position. He ran a little bit short there, but uh, he should manage it with the rest. So if he puts this red the, after this red, there's 59 on the table. So he will need another red after this with a, a, a relatively high color. 16. Great control in just landing on the black. Slight run through on the red. He makes no mistake with those blacks. Very rarely misses it. Very rarely is. And also, now if you look at the difference now. Uh, difference is now 46. So. Still 51 on the table. 59 on the 59, table. 59, there's another red, yes. So he needs a red with a color. With a high color to secure. And uh, Charles has still got an opportunity, albeit it's not an easy one. It's very challenging. Challenging finish from here. There's only one red up. Bakhri just twitching that shot a bit. He normally doesn't do that. Charles is going to have to do pretty well to get the other three reds into play. And also, he'll have to make sure he takes uh, big colors on them. Because small colors won't help. Would he dare go for this double into the center pocket and Six. bring the white onto the black or pink? I think he, he may just take he, it on. He might just do that. He's in a situation where he's got absolutely nothing to lose now. The frame is almost lost. And he certainly does attempt it. Yeah. He did not want to cut it too much because he would have collided into the reds. So he opted to narrow the angle and missing the, the cutback double. And Fakhri getting a bit lucky there. Fakhri also going for a double, getting the opposite uh, center pocket. So Fakhri is now 41 points up with a pos possible 43 on the table. 
So he rolls. He rolled up onto the black, and obviously the referee. sounds surprised. The ref called no touch. So we didn't see that clip. Uh, he he attempted to roll up behind the black, and the and the ref says he didn't touch that black, which resulted in a foul seven. It would have been nice to see a review of that shot, but uh, I don't think we, we had the camera feed on that. Uh, Shaw's still got a lot of work to do. The frame is uh, still pretty much in Fakhri's favour. The difference is 34 points. 43 on the table. And the Reds are um, not in favourable positions to, to for, for Shaw to clear the table. He, he do, he'll do pretty well. He's playing a bit frame. of a waiting game, yeah. And he is a very patient uh, player. Without a doubt. Seen. Without a doubt. And uh, Fakhri is not the most shabby safety player. He's one of the better safety players around this country. In fact, uh, if anything, uh, if, if anything in, in Gauteng, the reason why he's been dominating Stuka in Gauteng is not because we're spotting. He's, he's a good safety player. Here we're going back to that... Uh, replay of the foul that Fakhri made and he played it soft and the referee is 100% ref correct. the is spot on. He didn't make contact with that black ball. Yes. There was a clear daylight between the balls. Fakhri not taking any chances now, but uh, leaving a long red here for Shaw. He might attempt this because the other red is safe. Opting for the safety rather. Yeah, well, Munir, he, he can't afford to miss. Shaw will always opt for the safety in a... Well, he finds himself in a position where he is to be 100% certain of a pot on the red. Uh, and if he misses, uh, the frame would certainly be over. Fakhri going for a centre pocket pot, a very um, difficult one, and, uh, and misses it. And he hasn't actually realised. He's actually, he's actually almost put the stable up because the other red's quite free. So if Shaw gets good position on this, then he's got a good chance to oh, come back into well, the game. One. He does have the yellow to the center pocket and he could use um, yes, the, the natural angle to come back. The difference the is red. only 33, so Correct. he can afford to go for the yellow. And uh, remember, the yellow goes back to the spot, so it will be easier for him to get Back to the yellow after putting the black or blue. Three. So he's got a great chance here to actually sneak the frame. Bakri had the chance the previous game. Mm -hmm. Charles in the similar position. Is he going to have the nerves to do it? Not a very easy pot. Not a very easy shot to pot this red. But he pulls it off. The frame could be his. And he does. Oh, what a great shot. Just not getting hold of his white properly because he needs. He still oh. needs a good color here. I think he'd be very disappointed in the in the white ball. He focused the positional shot on the, with the white here. Very uncharacteristic of him. He had all his focus put onto that pot, yeah. <laughs> not making sure of the position. So he needs a brown here. He needs a brown. The yellow will still need him leaving snookers. He'll still need a snooker. He'd, he'd, yeah, he'd go. Good? He'd go for the safety, or is he? He's gonna go for a safety, and. Uh, push this white ball behind the pink and run the yellow down to the black pocket. He's actually gone for the pot he's with the built-in safety. Yes, a pot to nothing. Pot to nothing. He would, if he had potted, it would have been a green, but here we see if he misses, he knew his white is going to be tucked away behind Fakhri, attempting a swerve shot. Oh, Oof. that was very dangerous. Could have easily gone in off there, but the but the, the right hand side actually kept it out. It checked the ball and, and it hung in the pocket. But he's left uh, Shal up here, Munir. Need a good shot. Not just a focus on the pot. 
No, she also needs a snooker, eh? Remember, because uh, because on the last red, he did not he take, didn't a take a color. Correct. Yes, so, so he um, needs a snooker. There was 27 points on the table with the Charles uh, potting the yellow. There's now 25 points on the table. Two. So and Charles 28 points behind. So he'll be looking to go for a snooker. I'm sure he'll be looking to go for it. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense to put the green. He'll be looking to snooker behind the pink or blue or the black. Only requiring one snooker. The deficit is 28 points. And um, colors on remaining on the table amount to 25 points. And a snooker, oh. if Fakhri doesn't hit the uh, the green or ball or green or brown ball on would result in a four point penalty. So it would be enough. One snooker would be enough. Yes, and he, and, he, and he had a good attempt there. He just wanted to get brush past the pink. Just managed to catch the pink a little bit thick and did not get the snooker. And uh, you know the rule of when your opponent's looking for a snooker, snooker him before he, he snookers you. <laughs> so this is exactly what Fakhri has done. Very, very clever snooker. Lovely out from Shaw, and it's a very good white. Uh, Fakhri attempting a long cross double, leaving the green in the yellow pocket. I think he's got to be very careful because if Shaw pots the green and the brown, the blue and the pink is in prime position for easy roll-up. Definitely, snooker. yes, and if, he, and if he gets that snooker very tight, it's not going to be easy to come out of. And if you don't, Charles will clean up. So he's got to be careful. And uh, you know what makes these tables challenging oh, for Rod? The kiss on the black may just... Three. No, not, it's not in. Uh, yeah. Not in. You know, but left him left him with a lot of distance between the white and the What's brown. What's the challenging thing when you get a snooker is the cushion slide. You can always predict the angle, like in geometry. But there's the other factor on, on snooker tables. It's called cushion slide. That f that that moves oh, away from the laws of geometry. It makes your your it angle more yes, bigger. It doesn't so move in a straight line. Exactly. It so. It's always challenging when you're in snook in a snooker on these slidey tables. And there we are, Fakhri again going for a snooker, and he's the one that doesn't well, need it. You know, he, he went for the pot there, Munir, but a very clever shot. Yes. Look what he, uh, where he brought his white ball, right against that ball cushion. Yes, getting the, the snooker, I think, is yeah. a bonus, but he had the white ball in a very safe position. You know, Jimmy White used to say, the verse in the Bible states, uh, do unto others as you would done unto you. But Jimmy White says the snooker term is Four. do unto others before they do unto you. <laughs> <laughs> and that I picked up from one of his uh, old coaching books. It was written there, so I just, you know, sometimes you tend to remember these little small things. Yeah, it's, it sticks <laughs> with you. Well, now, Shal requiring two snookers. And yeah. I would have thought that Fakhri would have made sure on the brown and brought this uh, frame to an end because uh, Shal not totally out of it. No, he's not. The balls are still lying in a favorable position, exactly there. Look oh, at I, that. I think he may have, it's going to come back. He, yeah, it's he, just hit it a bit too hard. These cushions, they are playing on steel block um, tables. The cushions are the very cushion lively. And the cloth is new. Uh, Strachan number 10 cloth, world champion. Um, this is uh, exactly the cloth the professionals play the professionals on. Professionals play on. Yes, it's a shaven cloth, so it's very fast. It's not your ideal home cloth, but if you want fast conditions, then you got to opt for Strachan number 10. And that's what we were speaking oh. about a bit earlier. If he gets, if Shal gets to the brown, he would use his opportunity with the blue and the pink very close to each other to attempt to snooker. I think he wanted to run up just a little just bit more. Just a little bit more, unfortunately. Yes. But he's still a small stun and will get that 
white just on the pinky over in this. Yes, just just hit it a bit too thick. But he needed to, to keep the, the blue at bay. Fakhri is going to be now basically just rolling the blue towards the back. But this is very dangerous for him. It looks like the ball's going in off. Oh my goodness. Unforced error there by Fakhri. Shaw still needs one more snooker. But the he difference just is now 20 points and uh, there's 18 left on the table. So he does require one more snooker. But I tell you something. He's, he's in a good position. He's in a very good position. He can leave the white behind the black. Hitting it just a little bit thick. But nevertheless, getting a safety and giving himself another opportunity to get a snooker. Getting the snooker is one thing for all, but then finishing the balls and completing, it's another matter. We've seen Shaul earlier, got a snooker, and some or the other could not compose himself to finish the frame off. But well, uh, I tell you where the pink and black is lying now, you would, uh, I, I don't think, if he, if he gets a snooker, he would certainly finish yes, up so yeah, they're both quite easy huh? in the middle of the table the yes. black's not in a very difficult position but it's not going to be easy to get a snook here mind you the black's not in a bad position but it'll take a good shot for him to get a snook uh, I predict Fakhri will pot this ball oh, making an attempt with the screw and leaving the white a bit on the safe side so, erring on the side of caution, rather. And that's a game of snooker, Munir. You, you, you want is to concentrate on the pot, but also get that white ball in a safe position. Yes, it scores now to each, and uh, the game time is 1 hour 43 minutes. So, even though it's a best of 13, and the, once the, clock's, uh, the clock finishes off, the person that is leading on the frame scores will be the winner. Will be declared the winner of the match. You're quite correct. And uh, if it's going this way, it might be headed towards it. But I can't see them. Can't see them finishing uh, 13 frames. You know, another how many frames are we looking at? Another nine frames. Eight. Another eight frames. If you take this one off, in one hour 43 minutes. That's well. If they continue going head to head, and uh, unless somebody uh, pulls away and uh, wins the next uh, five frames. Yes, the person winning this frame is definitely an, ad 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 an advantage. I feel a little very crucial, very crucial frame. Yes, uh, in this match, uh, yeah, very crucial frame. Almost halfway. Bakri Hildin just rolling the ball up to the bottom corner. That's what he's going to do. Just roll the balls up to the back. So any youngsters watching this game, just remember when a person requires snookers, all you got to do is roll the balls towards the back. That is correct, because uh, Charles needs a snooker, so he doesn't uh, help him in any way potting that blue. He wants that blue ball to remain on the table. It would give him a better opportunity to get a snooker. Definitely, proud. Right up Fakhri's alley. I'm actually very surprised he missed it by that distance. No, it didn't look like he went for a pot. You think he may have, you know, yes, possibly it, it went for... But this is a, this is going to be a tricky snooker. It is, it is possible, but very tricky. Yeah. I think... Yeah, Shaul has managed to just sneak it in there. But I think Fakhri, if you look at the, the shot, he might sure have passed that black. It's a slight swerve, excellent swerve, good control, hitting it on the full side on the left so that it does not go enough. Look at the replay. Nice execution and good follow through on the shot. Uh, Charles lost that, that cue ball a bit, and I think uh, Fakhri is not going to miss this blue now. Definitely not. Definitely not. He would pot this blue, and and that would be the end of the frame. 
I think he's a bit concerned <laughs> about his white ball. Yes. Uh, he's so he's playing with a lot of. Uh, He's playing with a lot of uh, drag on the shot, trying to hold his white. And sometimes when you play with a bit of drag, it tends to deviate the white to the left. If you look there, he's playing with drag. So you see drag, yeah. bottom shot, and the white drifts into the blue. Because, well, he's playing against the nap as well. Yes, so it it, it tends to pull towards the, the pocket. The pocket, yes. So. Charles is uh, our pro snooker champion for the last three events that has happened. This is his fourth event. Fakhri Girdin coming off recently in wins uh, at the SA Masters, uh, SA Classic Championship. SA Classic Champion. Five. And he also won uh, the inaugural tournament at the new club in Pretoria, Pretoria Country Club PCC. He won the tournament. Uh, so he's coming fresh of a couple of victories also, full of confidence. That blue ball would seal the frame. I don't think uh, Charles would get back to the table, but he's off his seat. He'd want to try and do something. Uh, what is the difference? 25. That means he needs uh, three snookers. No, two snookers. So he'd still want to try. And there he goes six. enough. So that's Frank. it. I think, yeah, the cons yeah, concession comes in and Fakhri now leads 3 2. This match is poising to be very interesting now, going forward. background there on the right hand side. We can see uh, Cuban Woodley, the CEO of ProSnooker, talking to Mr. Derek Hawley, the CEO of uh, United Pool, which is in Alberton. He is one of the sponsors of the tournaments that uh, are up upcoming next year. I think it will be called the UGV Masters. And also next to Cuban Woodley, part of the team of ProSnooker is Ishan Kirsten, Kirsten Woodley there with the black track suit. So all these guys have been contributing in an enormous way to the game of snooker. You can see Derek Hawley from United Pool walking past there with Cuban Madea, obviously hopefully discussing some future sponsorships and events for pro snooker. Well, they certainly are. The next event is the UGM Masters. Okay, is, um, it, is, is that going to be in, in, in KZN? Uh, correct, KZN in February. So no doubt uh, the CEO of pro snooker, Mr. Cuban Mudley and Derek Hawley um, engaging in discussions and if I know Cuban Moodley, he's trying to uh, extract a little bit more money to make the, the prize money even bigger and he, he's quite uh, good in doing that and I'm sure Mr. Hawley would oblige. That will be good for snooker, we need all the input that we can get. One looks at this replay again. Okay. The players on a slight mid-interval mid break, so we'll just show you some replays. And uh, Farad, I was talking earlier about PCC Club. Uh, you know, you think these pro snooker things are going to be attracting more people to open up good venues around the country? You know, Munir, I tell you, this is the first in South Africa and pro snooker has revived uh, interest yeah. in snooker in the country. No doubt they would be having qualifiers around the country. 
uh, clubs will be hosting it and it gives an opportunity for young players to come through and uh, try and win a qualifier to get into the last uh, into the top 16 yeah. and uh, play on the big stage so pro snooker doing an exceptional job for development of snooker so yes if there are anyone six players uh, interested in two, playing in this event yeah please log on to the pro snooker facebook page drop us a message and we'll direct you to the nearest club for the next qualifier and don't forget pro snooker is also affiliated to snooker and billiards south africa so they're basically the promotional arm of snooker in south africa We are in frame six, Fakhri leads 3-2. And uh, Charles wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't expect him to break off any the blue. Prese but uh, presenting Fakhri with a, an, a, a very challenging pot. In, uh, I think Fakhri will maybe opt for the safety, Farad. I'm sure he will opt for the safety. You know, Fakhri is such an attacking player. Yeah. And one. Look at that, eh? He pulls off the degree of difficulty of that pot. He missed one earlier, the previous frame, and this one he got he got in. But can that black go? Is it just too much on the low side? The referee will be looking at this very closely. Oh, but it looks enough. like it can go. Oh, yeah, it can. It, oh. Oh, no, it couldn't. So he went off the red. He tried to he attempt yeah. it off the red. Yeah, mm. quite right. But leaving the white in a very safe position. Yes. Not giving anything away. Farad, now I was talking about earlier, do you think we're going to see more clubs like Wanderers and come up? Uh, we've got a new club in Pretoria, for those that don't know, Pretoria Country Club. Wanderers was the Premier Club. Um, I'm saying now Pretoria Country is the Premier Club only because the facilities are very new and very nice. But obviously Wanderers is the preferred club for Snook and Billiard South Africa. But are we going to see more clubs like Wanderers in Pretoria Country Club pop up around South Africa? Do you think that will be happening? Well, I think... That certainly would be happening, the the work that Pro Snooker is doing, and they will be involved in assisting uh, clubs setting up venues. And we'd uh, most certainly, I mean, we've got a very nice and decent, uh, beautiful venue, actually, uh, Q Master Center in Durban. Yes, we have. In Montclair. So and that's um, been used a lot for the essays in the past. Well, they have a signature room there uh, that is world standard. So... That is one of the best venues uh, that I've seen. The signature room in South Africa uh, at uh, Q Master Center in Montclair, Durban. Yeah, hopefully they get all the tables to the same standard as the signature room table. I think they have got plans for that. What? I've heard them talking about getting steel block tables in and replacing the other tables. Uh, well, I, I tell you, Q Masters have done an exceptional job in driving yeah. that center. Without a doubt. So... Um, and look here, we've played a lot of SA Championships there in the past, you know, so... And there's been a lot of memories in that club. There certainly has. Well, Shal now at the table, Eight. and he has an opportunity. Still early in the frame. Nine. And uh, there's a few loose rats available for Shaw to make a small break here. Lovely stun run through there off the cushion. I think he may be a little 16. bit too low on, the, on, this, on this red to get to the black. He might opt to go down for the blue. He, yeah. I think he would. Yes. Actually, the pink can go, so he's on the pink. Yeah, we it's didn't a lovely see shot. Yeah, yes. Pink is available. He's looking to see where the pink spots. So unfortunately, in this country, we need a more, we need few more clubs like Wanderers and Pretoria Country Club and and Nepsa Center, uh, what Q Masters Q Masters Center. Center. We need a few more clubs like them. There is Nairns Club in Cape Town. I heard they, in the process of refurbishing, they might be putting new tables. So, Snooker's looking good. 
in this country. I think we are we are past the stage of uh, no return. We are getting better and stronger, hopefully. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely amazed at the interest uh, Pro Snooker has created for um, the revival of snooker in South Africa. And uh, year after 30 years, Munir, we have South African snooker on live TV. Yeah, that's a, that's kudos to the whole team for what they've achieved here. It's uh, allowing people like Shaul and Fakhri to showcase the talent to the rest of the country. Shaul fully focused now on taking all the loose reds. 31. You know, where the, where the pack is in a cluster like that and Shaul picks off one red at a time, he, this is his game. Definitely. He, is, he, he makes very little mistake when he's in this position. He is so meticulous in nitpicking and taking out the loose balls and opening 52. and creating more reds available to the other pockets. That is his strength, certainly. He, he's not quite happy with, what, with the shot. He just overran that white. He wanted to be a lot straighter on the pink going into the center pocket. Yes, and he's contemplating, should I be going into the pack so early? I don't think he wants to do that. No, I think he's contemplating whether he should take the yellow or the blue and make sure on the pot he opts for the yellow. He would rather want to take those few loose reds out and then go into the pack. Yes, no reason to be aggressive right now. Oh. And that and Basic mistake he made there, Munir. Stretching a bit, eh? Stretching and just bobbed up on his shot. Yes, because he's full, it's full there stretch. There we go. And okay. he's usually a very steady player and full stretch. Should have taken the rest. He should have, and he's so good with the rest. Mm. So he takes a 32-point lead into wow. the sixth frame, but... Uh, and Fakhri is going to really try and come back into this. Would he then go straight for the black here or hold for the pink and come back into the pack? No, he'll go for the pink, definitely. And try and position himself to... But he's landed, he's landed on just too short. Just too short. And, and, and numerous times we've seen that the players are running short coming to the blue spot. Uh, we, we actually, in, you know, mentioned talking about uh, Pretoria Country Club, but in Pretoria we were very fortunate. We were very fortunate that uh, that we had the revival of snooker from uh, PCC, a, a, a gentleman by the name of Pete Yodan, and his some fellow club mates of his, uh, Rob Hoffman. They revived the snooker at their club and, and created a facility for Pretoria. Otherwise, snooker was in the doldrums in Pretoria. And actually, you introduced us to them. Right? They contacted you first. Correct. We played an inter-club uh, championship, and yes. that's where we met him. Well, excellent safety shot there by, by great, Shal. Great shot. Fakhri will go for that loose thread and try and keep the white, but um, excellent shot. Good shot. Good containing safety out of a snooker. So Shal has a 22-point lead in this game. Not much in it. Not much. Uh, Seven reds, still anybody's game. And if you look at all the spectators in the top tier, the top tier is quite full, the bottom tier is full. We've got almost a full house here at the venue today. So if you have not made your way to the Snooker at Gold Ref City, you are missing a top-class event. You are certainly missing some good snooker. And it's all free of charge. Exactly. Wow. Oh, unlucky. So I'll try to get the red to the bottom. Maybe try and go for a pot of the yellow. Of the yellow, but, uh, well... The red just straightened out a bit. It, it did, and I don't mm. think he he left much on, with the exception of the red that's behind the yellow.
goal reefs that you have definitely set the standards for what uh, the event should be like going forward for us. World class venue, hey, absolutely. World class venue, the facilities around here, full entertainment for the family, and uh, lots of activity here at uh, the casino and the theme park. All, all in all com combination, I think this is one of the most, uh, the best entertainment venues in the country. I would go and say because uh, there's no other other theme park in South Africa right now. Rotunga Junction is closed. This is probably the only surviving theme park here, and uh, with the facilities at the casino. Uh, facilities for the kids. The restaurants, temple bowling, movies, I can go on and on, but it's all in one center. So, um, yes, uh, we in Johannesburg are, are spoiled. Exactly. Uh, because of Gold City, I think um, uh, this place is... But even uh, the standard of the snooker venue and the facilities around, uh, the, the other places are going to be hard-pressed to match this. It's going to almost seem like an anticlimax when you go everywhere else. <laughs> the, yeah, that would be true. We we are the Gold Rush City has really come to. I think I think we can call this the the, the, the crucible of South African snooker. Maybe you won't yeah. be fa you wouldn't be wrong in saying that, Munir. I would tend to agree with you. Yes, it's certainly set up that way. Top class setup. I think if the people from uh, international people look at this setup, they will be amazed at what the TV crew also has put up here. They've put up. The, the camera angles is magnificent, you know, it's world class. Following the players, following the balls, the, the view from the top. Even the scoring system, we, we had a big challenge in getting it right initially, the, the pro snooker team. And they've uh, comes in leaps and bounds that they've got it right. And uh, Fakhri is back in, One. into the game, yeah? Fakhri is back in, and, uh, and Charles attempted to safety on that red and just clipped the, the green, I think it was. And Fakhri in with a shout. He could um, open up a, a two-frame lead again. What a great shot that. Just maybe overrunning it too much, eh? Too much power on that. I hope not, because he's, he's really displaying excellent cue power okay, and white ball control. He's one of the best in the country. Playing it with a touch of right hand side and screw and and the side skidding off the cushion, but skidding too much. So he'll have to now play a safety from from the looks of it. But he's still in the game. Only 20, what is it now? 13 points behind. Yes, 13 points behind. He's got to be careful of that plant. He doesn't want the one red to pop out. And the one that's going to the center, eh? One, ah, oh. Six. I don't think you've foreseen that ball. Uh, well, a bit fortuitous, like you would say. Hey, uh, <laughs> lucky there. I wonder if we should give him the benefit of a doubt and, and say he saw that plant, <laughs> Munir. But uh, I, I don't think he had any. He, he played a safety. If he saw the plant, he would have played position. And he's going for the pink, it looks like it. That was a bit ambitious, I would think, for Rod. Very Even ambitious. He's a prolific potter in the center pocket, Box but. Uh, From the cushion. And at that pace, yes, I think that was a bit naughty. But look at him, he's left his white in a, in a reasonably safe position. There we are, we've got Cuban Moodley and Derek Wally sitting on the VIP chairs. Cuban Moodley, the CEO of Pro Snooker, Derek Wally, the CEO of uh, United Pool. Charles uh, Young now considering whether, well, actually he doesn't have a pot on Munir, so he has to, he's trying to negotiate the safety, he'll bring this white ball back onto the black cushion. He might go for a po pot, if right? it looks like he might be going for a pot into the middle. There we are, and pulling back towards the black, but uh, just too much power in that shot. He had safety in mind. Look at you, make no mistake, that's an excellent pot. But if you're going for a pot and you've going, uh, you know what, he's got unlucky. He kissed off the reds. I don't think he was playing a pot safety. He went for an aggressive shot. He wanted a kiss of the second red, he would Correct. have been perfect and, on the black. Uh, yeah, and stay on the black. So a bit of misfortune for him. What's he doing? Is he attempting a slight swerve on the pink? Or can he pot the pink? Oh, what a shot. What a great shot that was. 
not easy digging into the ball with fantastic bottom. With, uh, with bottom screw back there. Seven. It was a bit unlucky that he just could not see that red. I think he was trying to sc uh, screw back into the blue of the pink. So he would have held, ba he would have held, held for the red to the center. Now he's got to negotiate a, a challenging red into the corner. Well, this right will corner. show his confidence. He's going for the pot. Charles hasn't been taking his long pots on very well in this match today. White ball bounced a bit on its way to the pink. Well, he hasn't left much on for Fakhri. Yeah, Fakhri would offer safety here. He's now 19 points adrift, so he wouldn't want Shal to increase that lead. But he seems to be going for this one. He fancies his chances. Well, and what a great shot. One. What a great shot. And, and you see, that shot was actually almost a shot to nothing. That was the only red that he could have stuck up. But Munir, what an exceptional pot. I, uh, great pot. I tell you, the great degree pot. of difficulty. And this too is an exception. Oh my goodness. That was very, very close. That was very, very close. He was a bit unlucky there. Ball just drifted slightly to the left. Drifted slightly to the left. It looked like it was... It almost looked in there. Hey? Look uh, yeah, at that. on its way in the pocket. Just drifted at the last moment, but... Um, but he's not left up much. Uh, he was aiming... His next ball was the red on the cushion there. So... He still left uh, Shaw in a reasonably safe position. Shaw protecting his lead of uh, 18 points. Does not want to give any gap to Fakhri. He wants to level the scores three each. And then it'll be game one after that for Rod if he does go to three each. He wouldn't want Fakhri to take a two frame lead, certainly not. Yeah. Um, he played a very good safety. Fakhri returned it very well, yes. Charles has a... He can see reds, but he, I don't think he can pot it. I think the shot clock is going to come into account this game. Can you see that? I'm sure we're down to about 1 over 15 minutes. Or very close to that. Well, the that pot was, was on. Great pot from Charles. Yeah, an hour 17 minutes left. There we are. So, I was 17 Why minutes. Not? This match is going to be very close. Shaw getting in a stronger position this frame. He'd be looking to increase, uh, to level the, the match three games apiece. Still got a little bit of work to do. A lovely shot with a lot of topspin. And a little bit unlucky there, not to end up on the red. That was a very good shot to get the white ball back. He may just be, we may be deceived by the camera angle, but yeah, I don't think he can. He might be, he might be able to He's see it. He's looking at it, he yes. may be able to see it and pot this. Yes, it looks like he can. Yeah. Seven. And that was a, a winning shot for the frame. I tell you, that is a frame winning pot. Composed, white ball control straight on the black and um, he seals it in this visit. Oh my word, that is... He potted such a difficult red and he missed that black. I don't think he can believe it either. So, <laughs> Munir, 25 I, I point could lead. Hardly, I can hardly believe my eyes. And I think he's... Um, he just took his eye off the ball. A lot more disappointed. He gets a lucky safety. 25 and Fakhri returns with an excellent snooker. So this game is not yet sealed because uh, all the balls are in prime position. All the balls are on the spots except the black. So the person that pots this red is can almost be certainly be secured of this frame. Fakhri Khirdin will definitely be taking this long ball on Farad. I think he would because yes. uh, the balls are nicely... 
He'll maybe use the blue. Set for him to clear the stable, but he, he, it is a very challenging pot. He'll try and use the blue to shield in case he, he doesn't. Or the pink, yes, and a great pot. He great makes pot. those looks so easy. And he's got a, a got a great opportunity here. If he gets good position on the yellow, he's got a great opportunity here to steal the frame. Well, he's got a natural angle here, Munir. He's just got to roll the black in. And he's got a natural natural white to get back up to the natural white to get back up to the yellow. A little bit short again, eh? They keep running short coming from the top cushion towards the ball colours. Eight. So one good positional shot that can win him this frame, that can make a difference in the match. Still got a deficit of seventeen points to make up. No, not gonna be this time around, eh? Well, that's because he laid too short and he had to use the rest, so uh, he increased the, degree, increased the degree of difficulty. So and uh, Charles must be relieved that he wasn't punished. Yes, and the, def the deficit is 17 points. So we'll be trying to maybe put one or two colors safe. Oh. But fortunate that he didn't cannon the black ball into, into the, the bag. pocket. Yeah, he didn't see that properly. But I think Fakhri will lay a very nice snooker here. Possibly even behind the black, mind you. Oh, I think he attempted that. He's just went past the middle, so it's uh, it's almost safe. Bakri is not going to be presented with a better opportunity than this to, to clinch this frame. Sure. This is a, a great opportunity to, to Fakhri, for Fakhri to steal this game. And uh, all he has to do is get perfect position on the brown and he, he stands a very Five. good chance of nicking this frame. This frame can almost be the decisive frame in terms of the match. This is going to make a huge difference. I would agree with you. I and cannot a believe. very poor, a very poor brown played by Fakhri. You can see the disappointment on his face, little nod of the shaking of the head. He'll still go for this blue. Yes, he, he won't go for it. it. Wow. What a great shot. What a recovery shot there. We see in our picture. Well, let's look at the end of the frame. He needs this black ball, uh, Munir. And he's left ball. himself in a perfect position to pot the black. Is he going to do it? Oh, and he pots what the black steal. to steal the frame. Fakhri now leads 4 2. And in our picture, we have in our picture CEO we have of Pro Snooker, Mr. Cuban Mudley. And CEO of uh, United Pool, Mr. Derek Ori. And uh, to. On the, on on the, the left Cubans. of the screen, we had uh, Hrita Stienkamp. Hrita, from the owner of Q Masters. They are all the VIPs of this event uh, and sponsors of other pro snooker events. I think Hrita Stienkamp has been instrumental in, uh, in, in in the success of pro snooker. Well, I think, yeah, she's... Uh, she's been very involved with Cuban very Moodley. Very involved with Cuban Moodley. Cuban yeah. Moodley having a chat with... Our refs. That's uh, Kubis Kastein there. He's the scorer for this match. And uh, Stefan Stienkamp from uh, Sedi Bang. He's our referee for this match. Next to uh, next to the scorer there, we had Anina Detroit from Sedi Bang also. And we have a lot of spectators uh, getting excited by the snooker. They all watching and glued to the match. The upper tier is very full. The lower tier is quite full. There's only a few empty chairs here at this venue. Everybody enjoying the snooker. You know, Munir, I walked into this venue and I and I looked at it and I was astounded by the, uh, the, the setup. And then I went up, got myself a seat in the upper tier and had a 
beautiful vantage point bird's eye view of the two tables when the knockouts were were happening and I, uh, I tell you what a beautiful view uh, from the top tier definitely it's it's amazing the uh, the setup and the 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 venue design is is like almost made for snooker you know well Ellison our MC uh, said to uh, Kiran Singh he said you call it the bullion room I think you need to change the name to the billiards room okay <laughs> because it seems to be well suited for billiard sports and then your screen we can see our spectators and the view of the trophy uh, obviously a few of the spectators have left the room and taking a bit of a break there's the upper tier earlier the whole section was full there wasn't a chair in sight and there we've got a legend on the top tier there it looks like Robbie Grace if I'm not mistaken that's uh, is that Robbie Grace that looks like him no that is Brian Lars is it Brian Lars oh Brian Lars is that from, uh, from Wanderers from right? Central Gauteng Snooker Brian yes. Lars is in the, in the middle uh, two brothers Trevor and uh, Sean Ziegers on either side they play from S uh, Wanderers Club Central Gauteng Snooker so we've got a lot of spectators making their way to this venue from far and wide Shaul Young trying to compose himself and uh, ask himself how did he lose the last game he was in a prime position to level the scores three each well they're both about the same age, eh? 38 and 40. Uh, Fakhri has been playing snooker since the age of 14. He played in Cape Town. He's initially from Cape Town. Minutes left. Seventh frame. Fakhri leads four frames to two. Fakhri to break. And we have uh, Stefan Stienkamp now calling, uh, starting the, the seventh frame. This is a very crucial frame now for both players. Fakhri Gherdin is in a very, very advantageous position, leading by two frames, and the shot clock is ticking down. So, Charles Yonk will be a bit under pressure to try and level the scores at least. If he can't level it, when that shot clock strikes down, Fakhri Gherdin will be declared the winner. Whatever the frame scores are at that stage, it will not matter. It will matter what, what the, the main frame scores are. So, the, indiv the frame itself will not matter. The frame count at the top will matter. So well, Shaul, here, there's enough time for for Shaul to to pull back to two at least frames. pull back two frames, definitely. Certainly enough time. Uh, there's 67, 67 minutes. minutes left, and you could uh, get at least three. They've been taking an average of half an hour frame, and you know, I predicted this before, and I didn't see them making big breaks. They both will be nervy, and they both will be wanting to win this title. So they will be playing more the cautious type of snooker, and that's what's happening. They're not going for the big breaks. Well, you really see it in the final, do you? You don't yes. want to sacrifice a frame in chasing a big break, so... But Fakhri might go for it now that he's two frames up. He might feel he's got a bit of freedom. And saying that he misses the red. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think he'd go for it. You know what? Making a big break would be um, a, a lovely achievement, but he needs, he'd want to, to win this title. So are we saying the sponsor's uh, 10,000 rand might be safe? You know what? Yeah, it probably would be safe. And I think at this stage for Fakhri, um, the title... <laughs> the title means the more, title definitely. certainly means more. And, and he's hungry for this, Ferrari. He's been, you know, he's, he's, the, these titles have been eluding me. He's really been trying the last few tournaments. Everybody's been trying to knock Charles off. So this will be a great feather in his well, cap. Yeah, Charles is the man to beat. Yes, definitely. He'll still be the top pro rank player, even if Fakhri wins this one. He's accumulated enough ranking points to stay at the top. But uh, saying that, he'll want to still win this one. Well, I can tell you, Charles is not ready to throw in the towel. Far from it. He's a very resilient uh, player and quite capable. He's Definitely. He's not faced by that shot clock. He will go about his business. One. And I think we're in for a very exciting uh, climax to, the, uh, to, to this, this match. match yeah. Definitely. Sean playing a lovely stunt shot of the power stunt shot of the side cushion to come back on the red to the top. 
He's going to look to maybe playing to the blues to try and develop some more reds. Six. He's got on the high side of the blue. Maybe just a bit too much. A bit too much, but I think... Yeah, a tad too much. I wonder if he'll be able to get the angle to get the white ball cannoning into that pink and, and spread the reds. He's got to hit it more on the left side. If, he, if not, he's got a chance yeah. of going in off. He's going quite low, so he's certainly going for this to spread the reds. And he hits it perfect. He hits it absolutely perfect. He might be on that red. If not, there's a red into the center. 11. Shaw Young now going on the offensive. Yes, he's got to win this frame. 12. And on the perfect side of the blue to get back into the balls. Now he's concentrating. He's got his concentration kept, kept back on. He'll yeah. be wary of the time. Uh, you're quite correct, Munir. So he doesn't want to get into a, a safety battle with, with Fakhri late on in this frame. He's quite capable. As we've seen before, he's made two centuries already. Yes, and also in the match yesterday, he made two successive 75 breaks. So he is capable of, of, of finishing the frame on one visit. Yes, and keeping Fakhri in his seat. 18. Really focused now, looking at all the different options on what's the best way forward in constructing this break, this very important break. It was a bit unlucky that he was trying to develop some more reds. He uh, wanted to go into the back of the pack and open the 25. a uh, lot more reds up. He caught the first red, but thin then. This ended up sending the white right into the ball. He'll be extremely disappointed. He pushes himself. At, you could see in his, in his face. He pushes himself. Is he going to try and cut this ball or rather play a containing safety? He would go for the cut. If he misses, he'll get the white ball up into bulk. That's a great shot. Great cut. Just overrunning on the blue a bit. Well, that's all right. It gives an opportunity to continue with the break. And once again, in this frame, he takes the lead. Excellent shot in and out of bulk. Great Beautiful break. white ball control. 51. and gets his white in a perfect position on the other red. Coming nicely between the brown and green on that yes. shot. Charles sponsors getting good mileage with all their names written on the back of his waistcoat. He's one of the few players that's really taking advantage of his sponsors and giving them good mileage. So he's got to be careful not to touch a thread with his forearm. And that, uh, that was probably the deterring factor in him missing the, the black into the pocket. You know, that hasn't been the first black and a shot that, um, you know, you would put money on Charles Potting. Yes. But that that uh, little red hampering him on the side cushion. Yeah, I think you're quite right. The moment he's, he bridges a bit awkwardly, uh, it's, it seems to... Um, 
to throw him off his shot. To throw him off his shot and yeah. hinder uh, his potting ability. So, Fakhri back at the table. Shal with a 31 point lead, and in the scheme of, the, of things, not a very big lead. That could, will, can be very quickly uh, eroded. And there's a few reds for Fakhri to, to take before negotiating into the pack. I think he will do that rather than go straight into the pack. Five. There's one red on the top side of the pack, one red on the bottom side. And maybe one in, even in the middle of the pack. Yeah, do a, you'd probably soft roll the pink, do the one at the bottom. Uh, play position for the one at the bottom of the pack. Uh, depends where the pink spots. Yeah, it doesn't look like the pink can spot, eh? Maybe it can. You play the one at the bottom of the pack. Pink goes comfortably on the spot. Yes, gives himself a nice angle 11. for the red and to get into another color. Okay, so he'll be taking the top red, as we can see in the picture. But in potting the top red, he frees up the red on the other side of the table. And, and there's a red on this side, next to the pink. So he'll be opening up a few options for himself. So there's no need to go Bravo. into the pack. A very intelligent player. Yes. This is what Shaw was doing yesterday. He was not picking the balls out. And Fakhri is doing it today. So he'll roll through for the for the red on the closest to the cushion. Rather opting to go into the pack, I'm very surprised. Because when you do that, you actually lose control. And uh, he's a bit fortunate 18. that he's on a red. Not a very easy one, Munir, so let's see. You see, the control goes 18. out of it. The control, yes. Yeah, so he's now probably cause himself a lot of harm and brings um, but too anxious to get it over and done with yeah brings yeah. a break to an end he had an excellent opportunity to to continue with that so he would have to get the white into bulk and that would be the end of fakhri's break he made a 19 break and still 13 points adrift this is similar to the previous game where shawl was on 32 and fakhri was on 19 also 13 points adrift. Very similar situation with six or seven reds to go. And now we've got five reds. Shal in his long potting. I hope he doesn't let him down now. He's finally put in one, eh? He has, and one. unlucky not to get the required Very unlucky. Position. I think he would have. The pink would have. He would have gone for the pink in the center pocket. The red just blocked the route. He's definitely not getting the rub of the green for odd. He's definitely not getting the rub of the green. But saying that, you know what they say in this game, fortune favors the brave. You make your own luck. Eh? So, one. And it does sort of balance out in the That's end. That's true. Yeah, I think um, with this game, you, 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 do, you do create your own luck. Fakhri will be looking to play a Fine safety. cut, go around the, yes, and get into bulk. And, and again running short. Running short. Every time both these players, very, very rarely do they pass the bulk line. It's only on the break-off that they seem to get a successful break-off. Hasn't presented Charles with uh, many opportunities here. Charles would have to go for safety. May go for pot safety here. He goes for a yeah, safety has, shot. Charles yes. has got the pace right of this table finally. So he's getting his long potting right. He's getting his pace Excellent right. Excellent safety shot. Is this? Are we going to see the the comeback of Charles here? <coughs> Fakhri could only can only see one red ball. Uh, I think he's going to. He might go for a pot and a screw back back into bulk with this. No, he should go for a cross double <laughs> and bring the white back into bulk. That would be the correct shot. He should go for the cross double, uh, he's finally white back into bulk, the cross double. He's finally thinking correctly. Yes. Charlie has got an opportunity here, but he'll have to pull off another good long pot to get back into the game. 
very risky shot. If he puts that red, it will free the pink up into the same bag. It's a very risky shot, Munir. Um, Not to be done. Not to be done. And Fakhri's got a chance back at the table. Only 14 points behind. He's going to take this opportunity. Well, he has to. It no. wasn't a very difficult pot. Lovely, subtle touch to hang on to the pink. He's just checking after he pots the pink, will it spot? It, it will spot. So he'll just play a, another soft stun shot to be on the red. So he's got two challenging reds. Not really that challenging, but slightly challenging on the top cushion. Yeah. Can that red go from where it is? I wonder. I think it can. Yes, yeah. yes, it can go. Eight. That was an odd choice of shot for him to stun and pull into the pink. Yes, I would have. I would have ran through a bit and gone for the center pocket. Definitely, just maybe nudge it slightly on the way out, not, yeah. not stun through. But this is a great recovery shot from Fakhri. Excellent. You know, when you, with this man's potting ability, um, his long I, potting, I dare say he played for it. <laughs> his long potting is absolutely on song today. Straight down the middle of the bag. Playing a shot to nothing and uh, getting away a little bit with it. Well, I think if he didn't get a joy, he would have gone into bark. That was his yes. intention. So. And we, he, he's cut back at 19, uh, was it 19 point uh, deficit, was it? And 14 points 14 deficit. 14 point. And he's back level now. He's back level. The pressure is on Charles this game. Charles definitely not firing like he has the last couple of days. Sometimes uh, it's the expectant pressure, you know. Correct. He played an excellent safety shot here, though. I think Fakhri wanted to just touch this red and leave the white ball behind the black. If he would just nudge it and hold the white, he's and done he's, very well. He's done very well on that. Charles so looking at getting the white back into bulk. He's got to just watch where that red goes. And that looks like an excellent safety shot. Oh, mind you, I think the ball might be able to go in the gap between the black and the blue. Between two balls, Munir, he's got a cutting angle and it's certainly potable. Never between two balls, they say, hey? Never, Never between, between two, two balls. balls. Ah, it was a little bit unlucky, but he's... He's going to put Charles in a lot of trouble here, Munir. He's uh, going to... He's, he's definitely going to... Snooker him. Snooker him. He's not going to go for the pot here. And he did not succeed. Just playing it a bit soft. He had the line of the blue and the black. And there was an opportunity for him to take full control of this game. Charles still in this game. If Charles could go for the pot here and hold the white but at the black, if he misses, he could get a snooker. He has to play a stop shot. That, there we go. And that was very unfortunate. I think he still no, may have I the snooker. He's definitely a bit, a bit fortunate. An easy come out for Fakhri. All depends how this red develops. And when he <laughs> almost spotted it. Almost in. spots it, yeah. This is the opportunity for Schalt. Only the yellow ball. To at least take a, a s seven points and go back six points in the lead. But he's going to be looking for the snooker for odd. I'm very hey. surprised at his shot. I would have hey. thought he would have gone for the color and snookered Fakhri for the, the blue. yellow. Yes. 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 Um. So he's looking at the black. Bit of a drag shot there to hold back onto the black. Uh, the blue is in the way of the straightforward angle, but uh, knowing Fakhri, he'll go off the side cushion, bottom cushion, back onto the yellow. So he'll just want to miss the green. He'll just want to miss the green and going to bulk. He'll play, he'll play off the side cushion with a little, a touch of left hand side, but not to hit the green. That's it, a slight touch of left hand side. They always going in a direct line. Cushion, direct line. Very dangerous shot. Very dangerous shot. The referee will be putting that back. And this is going to be a very tricky one to replace back. 
Yeah, for yes. our viewers out there, the ball on is yellow. Once all the reds have been potted, you have to pot the colors in order. It's yellow, green, brown, blue, pink, and then black. Fakhri is in a snooker. He has to hit the ball on, which is the yellow. He made contact with the blue, resulting in a five-point penalty. And Shal now five points ahead. At this level of snooker, the foul and the miss rule is you, Fakhri would have to hit the ball on. So he has to make contact with the yellow. And if he doesn't, he will, the white ball will be placed back. So he's opting for the same shot, giving a bit of more side. And oh, oh, that's very an excellent well shot. Excellent shot. So he hit the ball slightly narrower with a bit more side. And... Uh, had a good escape out of that one. It could have been uh, very it, costly. It could have been very costly. If he missed, he would have been put right back in the snooker. So I think uh, Charles a bit disappointed in not uh, getting a few more points out of the snooker. And he's back into a, he's back into a snooker, it looks like it. But mind you, this one is a very easy snooker. Off the side rail. He'll play it with bottom and try and hold the white for a reverse snooker. For a reverse snooker to hold it behind the blue. It's highly possible. But if he doesn't hit it right, he could kiss that uh, yellow and go in off Munir. If he doesn't, oh, he's playing bottom. And he's yes. holding it, yes. Exactly. Great shot. Good shot from Fakhri. I don't think he got a snooker, but still an excellent safety shot. Excellent safety. It could have been much worse for him. Oh, this looks like a very good shot. Just a slight nudge on the green that might have left the yellow open. I'm actually quite surprised at the shot that Fakhri just played there, Munir. Yes, no. Not it much thought went into that, but um, he's left uh, Shal up. I would have thought he would have hit that yellow much finer and rather come back down. I, uh, and... Um, Charles attacking the shot and going for a positive attempt on the yellow to get onto the green. He's trying to seize his opportunity that Fakhri gave him. And this green, he's got to hit it with a bit of pace. We've seen, we've seen uh, he missed the balls in these in the, in the green pocket before, Munir. So he has to, well, he has to do a bit of pace. To hold for the brown. To hold yeah. for the brown, so... If he gets it in the middle of the pocket, he'll be all right. And not easy. Not an easy cutback. And uh, the, the worst thing about that shot is he's left the green up. And the brown's also up. But the blue is uh, relatively safe. So Fakhri's got a bit of work to do if he wants to finish off this game on the visit. He needs up to the pink. Both players need up to the pink. He oh. pots the green, he needs the brown to level the score, and he needs a blue and pink. The difference is now four points. The value of the brown is four. And he stretches, so it... Gives Shaolin That's interesting, because the value of the brown is four, value of the blue, five. Shaolin being four points ahead would need the brown and blue to leave uh, Fakhri to tie with the other balls, eh? With a 13-point lead and with the pink and black remaining on the table would be 13 points. And uh, he then can't lose the frame. The best Fakhri could do is tie for a, a respotted black ball. And you can just basically pot the brown and just hang on to the blue. Oh. And it's not to be. Not to be. Uh, luckily for Shaw, he did not hit it too hard. So he's leaving a very challenging very challenging shot. I wonder if these two players are not doing it deliberately and uh, cause unnecessary drama <laughs> for the sake of good enter uh, snooker entertainment. And I, I think they may just be doing that, would you? <laughs> I think they're making the, the, the people in the, in the arena a bit anxious. Not, this, not very easy, these straight shots. 
not very easy for our viewers at home. And Charles today has not been hitting his long balls as sweetly as in the week. You know, Munir, if you haven't played snooker, uh, for those who haven't played snooker, one would look at that angle and say, he has a straight shot. But I think uh, on a snooker table, that's one of the more difficult shots. You want uh, actually more of an angle. Exactly. It's, it's very challenging. You know, uh, when they talk about difficulty in snooker, they always say snooker by distance. Snooker by distance. So yes. either play a far away from the ball and it's difficult. Fakhri making no mistake on the brown, but he expected a lot more white to lie behind the blue. But um, it seemed like now level matters. Yes. So um, both players requiring the blue and pink to win this frame. A blue value of the blue is five points a value of a pink six and a value of the black seven points so blue and pink would amount to 11 points and that would give you the win and if any one of them puts the blue the other player would require the pink and the black correct so there's a good chance of this going down to the black Shaw Jonk uh, pushing the pink to the cushion, so yeah, I, I, to I, make a clearance here will not uh, be easy. I don't think he meant that shot. He'll take it though. But this is a challenging blue along the rail. You know, uh, Fakhri cannot. Fakhri might go for the shot. You know, he, he's got this shot that he'll play it with top and try and come back, knowing that he's only going to risk the blue. Or he might play a safety. I don't know. Yeah, he's going for it. <laughs> Just did not get enough top spin. To to come and swing well, around. Let me tell pick. you, that was a phenomenal pot on the blue ball. Amazing pot, amazing pot. And uh, he should opt for the safety. I know he's a prolific potter, but to take on a pink at this stage of the game. The thing is, with this pink, if he goes for it, if he misses it, it will hang into the I, bag. I, 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 I don't think he'd go for it. He has to, he has to play a safety. Bring that it up and, shot. and try and hold the white in line of the black, which the angle is not really there. He, he actually went for it, Farad. And this is going to, I feel this, this is going to cost him the frame. It was definitely hot. I am, I'm absolutely gobsmacked that Fakhri went for that. Yeah, for that pot, I think um, he's a prolific potter. I would put that pink. Needing only one ball, he could have played a good safety there. So I hope he's not getting desperate to stretch his lead. He has to wait. He's in he's in a commanding position. But saying that, uh, I sincerely hope that Charles can actually make use of this opportunity and take this frame. And he's not in the perfect position, unfortunately for the black. He might take a soft double on and not risk the ball to come back on. Or he could play the solid safety, but he might risk the double and get the white to the top cushion. I think that will be a risky shot. He's got to ensure that his white ball See, he's he's on the, the rail. Bag. He's yeah. looking at that bag. It's, it's very tempting. Very tempting. But if he catches the angle, the black comes back and it could stick Fakhri up. Well, if you remember the previous frame, two frames uh, ago, two frames ago, yes. we went for the double, and, and that's what cost him. It cost him the frame, and and you know he play, he's played a lot of pool, so he he, he he'll wouldn't be go for go. that. You get the white ball onto the black cushion. That's a more sensible and shot. That's a sensible shot, and he's played the correct shot. He must have remembered what happened a couple of games ago. But the, the difficulty on that shot was very high for Rod. It was very Fakhri high. Fakhri should just hit it against the, the rail and get the black in the center of the ball cushion. Get the black ball in the center of the ball oh cushion no. and make he a real hash of that. He did too thin. He did too thin and he's given Shaw a great opportunity here to take back a frame and make the score 4-3. Again, this could be a very telling game. And In Charles has just got to look after his white ball, pot the black, and look after the white. You must be careful. Oh, the white's all these white whites ball. coming just too fast. Slowing down, slowing down. It was headed, it was headed towards the corner. I, I, I did mm -hmm. see that angle, and I thought, please don't eat it too hard. And if he had, pot. if that white ball would have gone in, he would have it lost the frame. It would have been frame. the end of the shoulder. So the scores now are 4-3 in favor of Fakhri Khirdin. 
Look at that white. He's looking at it. He's saying, slow down, slow, slow down. down. <laughs> <laughs> so the scores are now 4-3. And this match is getting very exciting now. Back on the eighth frame. We're back on the eighth frame and Fakhri Khadin. Charlie has just pulled back into the match. And uh, seated next to me is uh, Mr. Farad James, the president of Snooker and Billiard South Africa. And he's also the president of the South African Confederation of Q Sports. If uh, anybody does not know that, Farad, welcome back into the box. Thank you, thank you, Munir. So we are nicely poised for an exciting duel here, Munir. Uh, Charles needing to pull back that frame, and now it's only one frame adrift. And uh, what do you think will be going through Fakhri's mind, playing a very reckless pink and um, following it up with a very poor safety on that black? Yes, and I can see, I can see now Charles going to be tightening up a lot here. The shot clock will be interesting to see how much time is left now because if the scores get to four each, it will be very interesting to see what happens in, this, in the context of this match. What, what is the criteria if it gets to four each and, and the match is concluded for us? Does it go to the highest break? Or first will be the frame scores that are on the board? Well, if it gets to four each and they uh, are in the middle of the ninth frame, the person, the person leading with, that's leading will win the, frame. the scoreboard will will win the match if the time yeah. uh, has come to an end. So, Charles, very aware of the time, he'd he'd play a lot of safety. He would not want Fakhri at and the what table. Would, what would happen if the scores are level? Is the is the next criteria the highest, the break by the two players? The highest break in the match and we, will then determine the winner. Who's, who's, who's on that at the moment? Is it Fakhri that has made the break? Has he made a? He's made something, hasn't he? I can't remember. Has anybody made a 60 or a 50 yet? Munir, I'm very surprised in the eighth frame, and uh, you're quite good at remembering scores. Yeah. <laughs> but and, uh, uh, saying uh, that, the players are both playing conservative. You can see they're not really going. Excellent for it. safety shot by uh, Charles. Well out by Fakhri Khirdin. He may have left this red on, uh, but um, he, uh, Charles is one to the center pocket. He's one is one below the black, but both very, very difficult shots to execute. He'll do very well by importing this ball. He, he's going for it. If he does it well, he lays straight onto the black. A light, deft touch just to get the control. That is certainly Charles' strength, uh, and yes. that is the 
He's very good uh, at playing those Very, very good, touches. and that is his game. In and around the black, soft touches, small stuns. Look at that once again. He's very clinical. Touch. And he's, uh, he's getting dangerous now, I feel. If he wins this game, it could be, it could be dangerous for Fakhri. He was in a very commanding position at one stage. Well, you know the game of snooker. You played it, you're still playing it, Munir. You were part of this tournament, and um, the balls around. You do, can not, you do not, you um, do not claim victory <laughs> until uh, you've got the required frame score. You can be in a commanding position, and this game can turn on its head. Yeah, you know the old adage, what they say, it's not over until the fat lady sings, eh? It's not over. The child looking very composed once again while he's in and amongst the balls. He's focused and concentrating. Lovely stun shot onto the black. And he's looking at maybe kissing into the red and trying to develop the other one. Oh, rather, it's rather surprising. I think the that's the second time he's got a bit of misfortune, I would call it, because to go through that gap he, that he just managed to to go through, he wants to go and nudge into the first red. red. Yes. And missed red. I mean, achieving both. So, so he's very he's unlucky. Very unlucky. As I said earlier, he's, he's not had the rub of the green he hasn't. today. He's just a bit but uncomfortable. He's not he's not been playing like how he did play the last two days. But saying that it is that expectant pressure. Everybody expects him to win it. He's the number one seed. He's a favorite to win it and he knows Fakhri is a contender. So I think he, he may not admit it Munir because in his early yes. in the earlier interview with Ellison, Ellison said asking that specific question and said, How do you feel? Do you feel added pressure because you know you've won it three times before? And he said no. He has confidence in his game. He backs himself to play a good game, and, and that's all he can do. So, yeah, and you know, you cannot be the same every day. Every day is a different day. So, today, maybe he woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Maybe he had something extra for breakfast that he shouldn't have had. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. Well, I don't think it's of his own doing. No. He, he, just, he just got a few unlucky kisses here and there. Or exactly. And he's not, he's not flowing like him, his normal self. Well, normally, when he gets into the balls, he does a lot of damage. And he leaves Fakhri up with the red in that pocket. I don't think Fakhri will make a mistake. He holds the white ball very well. Bit of an acute angle into the black. Well, do you think he'll take on the black or opt for pink? No, he's too much, too much to lose. Actually, he's going for safety. So he's playing a, a very sensible shot in the context of the match now. He needed to show some of that... Uh, that sends the previous game on the pink. And in saying that, Munir, he had a very easy safety option and yeah. hitting the green ball full, leaving the white behind the brown and, and yellow. Yeah. Sometimes also what happens, going down the table, the ball tends to drift to the left. So he might have aimed it fuller and it might have hit it a bit thinner. You know, it possibly could have not been his fault also. The tables wow. sometimes plays unpredictable. Charlie is displeased with... Charles yeah, definitely this messed up the shot now and... And Fakhri lets him off the hook. Unbelievable. That is absolutely unbelievable and he gets away with it. I don't think he has. There is one red on but... The blue is hampering it a bit, eh? Very, very tricky for Charles because very he'll tricky. be hitting with right hand side. He'll have to compensate for that. Not an easy shot but it is... It is potable. And Charles not bad at his shots. He is very well capable. Will he be able to hang on enough for the black? Kiss onto the red? Maybe. Oh. Mm. A lovely shot. A little bit close to the black. This is a very, very tough shot. Well, I hope it's not straight. If it's straight, it's impossible for him to pot. It will be called a push shot. Yes. Too and close I to the don't ball. think he's got enough angle on that black. Uh, it's, this, is, this is almost impossible. He needs to play it with the rest. So he'll, I'll be surprised if he takes it on. And he's taking on with the left, and now he's not going to take it on, is he? 
He may he may have a bit more angle than we think. Let's look at that again from the top. A lovely camera angle from Actually, the top. Actually, eh? he does have uh, a slight angle. A eh? slight angle to use the rest and pot it. But not an easy shot. Not Extremely an easy difficult. shot. Extremely He's got a lot to lose here. But he's got everything to gain should he put it. Great. Sh oh, yes. Excellent shot. What a lovely shot. The pace of the shot was essential there in allowing it to just drop in. If it wasn't for the pace, he would have, it would have stayed in the pocket. And uh, he's been playing those pocket pace shots um, throughout well. this tournament. Yes, very really well. He doesn't hit the, the, the balls very hard and he allows it to just drop uh, into the pocket. It was a very important here. shot in the context of this match. Well, he's got to make it count. Well, right now he's uh, got a 31 point lead. I think uh, Fakhri Khirdin will be ruining his chances for art. He was in a really commanding position. And I feel I feel he's really messed up now, that opportunity that he had there. Munir, let's just go back a bit. And uh, as I've said previously, yes, he missed the red. But I think he couldn't let the last frame go. Yeah, it was very important that he played it tighter, the he, pink. The, you know? Yes, so... That might be sitting on his mind. Certainly, certainly yeah. was. He has to put that previous frame out of his mind. Oh, and look at that. It's Today, Charles is not queuing like he normally does. He never misses those balls in a hurry. And well, he racked up a 32-point lead. Not enough. He's not a happy camper. Fakhri Khirdin now is going to put his previous frame. Look at the anxiousness on Fakhri's face. Look at that. And he's perfectly poised. Oh my goodness. Second opportunity that he's getting and he's not taking it. And um, a few cracks showing. Chinks in the armor. Kinks in the armor, shall I say, in Fakhri's game. Just not taking. You see, on the fine clots, we normally play for the nap to drift into the left of the, of the pocket. But because the cloth is so fine, the ball went straight to the knuckle but of the Fakhri pocket. But Fakhri has been potting those all tournament. In. Yes, and now he I'm very surprised that he missed. And there's a second red that i think easy red that he missed the previous opportunity and this fakhri may and this one fakhri may have gotten away with this but it was an opportunity to strike back and, and take command of the frame so in the context of the match it's still not good news for him not at all he's got to play a cannon onto the other red he'll probably try and leave it on the on this side of the red closest to the black just in case he misses. You know, Munir, how many times have you and I attempted that shot? Looks very easy to execute. And it's not easy. Uh, yeah, the you calculation has to be 100% precise for that shot. Yeah, because you are wonder You need to know where you can hit the first red. Yeah. And uh, you can be a millimeter off and you miss the pot. Well, Fakhri Khirdin, once again, getting it uh, getting the pot. And earlier he refused the black like this because he was going into the pack. Well, he's going for it this time. He could nudge the red in the pocket or he's not. Oh, he's playing the safety, but look at the white. No. Oh, good safety. But uh, he needs to be attacking a little bit more, yeah? You know, Munir, you would say good safety. I tell you something. He's a very relieved man that the white <laughs> didn't drop it because it was pretty close. <laughs> but I'm surprised at the choice of safety there. Actually, maybe not. The red was the, there was a red at the bottom of the table, so he, he felt probably better that it's better off here in the top. That's about a cat and mouse. Very here. clever shot by Charles, putting a red up into bulk. So Fakhri can't just run the ball, white ball into bulk because he'll leave a red up. So they're very intelligent shot by... Yes, and he can't even attempt the ball into the middle. He can't because now if he misses... There's Is a ball it? up in red, uh, in bulk. So, very calculated shot. Very intelligent shot by Charles Young. Charles is an old player. He's an experienced player. Very shrewd. Very, uh, very experienced campaigner. So, he's not going to give nothing for nothing. He's got his thinking cap on. A little nod of the head. Acknowledging, Acknowledging the good safety. The good safety. And two great sportsmen, eh? uh, on and off the table, good mates. Both both good friends, both good sportsmen. 
both uh, absolute gentlemen. They both have good personalities. And both of them playing good snooker because they've got their families behind them and fully supporting them. Charles Young has uh, Daniil in his camp. She's always behind him and fully supporting him. And Fakhri, his family as well. So, you know, uh, support of family very important because the time it takes to hone uh, your skill in snooker requires hours and hours of practice per week. Exactly. So this this takes a lot of dedication. And where is that white ball going? That will be very, That's gonna be very unfortunate uh, for Charles. Very detrimental. And he hasn't had the run of the table. He's absolutely gutted. He's disgusted at that shot. Absolutely gutted. And with Fakhri ball in hand. Fakhri's just got to compose himself. The Reds are all close Mil and in and around the, the middle of the table. He's just got to peel them off one at a time. I will be very surprised if Fakhri does not uh, clear this, this is, table. He's got to take his time and not rush it. There isn't a single red that's um, hindered in any way. This game, uh, if Fakhri does take it, this can be the defining moment of the match. The real defining moment. I think it would be. It certainly would be. And Fakhri should take his time. He should go for a simple run through on this pot into the center pocket. He's going for his favorite corner pocket. He'll stop the white and play the pink. Excellent shot. See if once Tien come the referee keeping an astute eye, making sure Fakhri is not making a foul with his shirt. A lot of players there, Munir, if you look at the shot, he had various, uh, he had two options. One is to stun it and the other to come off the cushion. Fakhri is one of those players that n more often than not loves playing off the cushion because the amount of side, the yes. sides that he use on the white ball. So uh, other players would have stunned this, would have got the similar effect. He, 90% of the time, would use the cushion because he plays side so well on, uh, on the white right ball. But right now he's choosing not to use the cushions. He's using the middle of the table. Have you seen that? Now referring to the earlier, the earlier shot uh, yes. pot on the pink. So yes, when, you, when you're in the middle of a table, small stuns and um, Just drawbacks on the white. Keep hold of the white. Yes. That's what he's doing. Stefan Stienkam making sure the cloth is nicely flat. Fakhri's shot selection is very imperative at this stage. And the blue might have been easier, but the brown was the correct shot because it takes him onto an easier red. So that shot selection was very, very crucial. Nothing wrong with the green ball. It yes. Points. He's got to take the shots that are going to lead him to the easiest red and help him continue with this break. He might take the blue and go up and down the table or he'll screw back. He'll screw uh, to the right side of the red. Come off the side cushion a little bit on the soft side, but nevertheless still portable. And not afraid to play uh, from close to the cushion. This one is a yeah, very good positional play. Lovely stun of the cushion there. He doesn't really want too much of a nudge, just a perfect nudge. And that's a good kiss for him. Sets him up on another color and a very easy positional shot onto the next red. Closing yeah. in on their deficit, he's only now four points adrift. He'll be tempted to take the yellow just to hold on to that red to the middle. I don't think he'll be taking the black just as yet. He's if currently on a break of 23, and I don't think the break matters much. No. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all, mind you. So he wants to clear this table. So taking his time, and he, and he well should be. Should be. That's, that's, that's the correct approach. This is an opportunity for him to, to seal the match. Keeping a close eye on the scoreboard, uh, scoreboard as well. He already knows what he needs to do to clinch this frame. He'll want to maybe nudge into the brown to hold on to the black. 
Knowing Fakhri, you play a lot more aggressive shot. What side? But what side? He, <laughs> he was very lucky that he got well, the kiss on the brown on the right side. I tell you something. It could have easily ended up on the wrong side. Confidence. Yes. He backs himself and he goes for the shot. Should. Oh, good. I thought Just he had an angle to run through pass. and go past and and put the red he, into that. Had he used the, the red to nudge into the black to hold on, to nudge into the brown and hold on to the black, he would have had a better angle to go to the top red. But like you said, he likes to go off the cushion. You know, he's a player that likes to use. Now side. look at the shot, Munir. If he if he takes this on, I'll be very surprised. I would certainly play the other red and put the white safe. That would be the. He does shot. look like he's going for the shot. It does look like he's going for the shot, and yeah, yet again, I'm very surprised. And he's given Charles an opportunity to yes. to come back into this game. He was in a position to seal up the game. You know, given uh, Fakhri's experience, I am very surprised that he took that shot on. I would certainly have played the, the red closest to the green. He's probably a bit anxious to get it over with quickly. I don't know. Uh, he did that the previous frame as well and cost him the frame. So why he would do that again? I am very surprised at that. And if Shaw gets a good nudge here, a good kiss on the yellow. Yeah, he did. He will be in a very good position to, to take this frame back. And uh, he's definitely allowed Shaw to come back into this game. Fakhri had this match almost sewn up. And he's not yet. He's not yet in a comfort position. Charles getting stronger slowly. One feels. Well, it just takes one poor shot selection uh, uh, on that rail along the rail. I believe it's a totally unnecessary shot to go for, given the situation. And he could have of waited frame. because he's four three up. Yes. You know? uh, I wonder what the shot clock is like. Uh, according to my estimation, it should be oh, yeah, 18 minutes. 18 minutes. So he could have waited. He could have waited. This is going to be a very interesting scenario if this game does come, if this game goes Charles' way and it becomes four each. The next game is anybody's game. I don't see Charles missing here. He knows he needs to, uh, I think he's in prime position here. He knows what he has to do. The game is level at you the stage. All the balls on the spot, besides the green, which is a little bit off the spot. And this is practice routine for Charles practice routine and he only needs up to the blue. That's all he needs. Focusing, full of concentration, showing some composure. Can he do it? Can Shaw take this frame? Perfect position to get onto the brown. Well, puts himself six points uh, ahead. The green is three, point brown four. He would need the blue ball to clinch this frame, or up to the blue ball to clinch this frame, yes. Nice steady cue action. Shaw keeps his head down and goes through the ball. Slight angle on the brown. Perfect. He seems to be happy with the result. It's a bit straight. I think you'll draw the skew ball back. You should be careful. And he's played it perfect. With absolute precision. And blue ball for the frame. And, Shaw and he make makes sure. no mistake. He'll make sure on the pink. And Fakhri looks worried now. And uh, if I were him, I would be worried. Because right now, the pressure is offshore. Pressure is off Charles. Great and well, well done. Each. I'm very happy for Charles to get back into this frame. He didn't have a very good run of the ball, but um, we four each and we've got a match on our hands. Yes, and now the time's going to come into effect because you've got like about 16 minutes left. And uh, this is where Charles is going to really tighten the screws. It's going to be very interesting. Unless Fakhri gets in early, it's anybody's game. Ladies and gentlemen, please note that we are done.
This was a shot earlier that Shaw missed, a very crucial shot in one of the previous games. A few defining moments in the match. Then the player leading in the last frame will be the winner. Thank you. If you looked at that shot for all, did you see the kick on that ball with the jump and hop? So I never got to the to the pink correctly. Yeah, he got a bit of a kick, but he did hit that yeah. very hard. Now we've come to a very end to of a very exciting um, few days of snooker, and I must uh, commend. Cuban Mudley and the pro snooker team of, uh, you know, in pulling off an amazing spectacle of snooker and a lot of work uh, goes into this. I don't think uh, people really appreciate the amount of work and planning, months of planning that goes into uh, a production such as this. And I think they've, they certainly have done South Africa proud, South African snooker proud in pulling off a world-class event so accolades no. to pro snooker all the hard work behind the scenes team. also yes great initiative from them uh, great exposure for snooker all the referees very professional a few newcomers to the game but all conducted themselves very well they're all learning and willing to learn things will only get better and we get to the ninth frame and I dare say this would be the final frame with uh, less than 16 minutes or so left. Oh, where? There we go. 13 minutes left. So time would come into play. The yes. player with the most points on the scoreboard will win this match. And uh, I mentioned a couple of games ago, Fakhri was in a very good position, 4-2 up. And if it comes to the to the last frames, it might come to the time, and it's and it's looking like that it's coming to. It. It's, it's actually unfortunate. I would, I would have loved to see this match go the distance and not be decided on the shot clock. But uh, for the TV production and the sponsors, this is this was one of the requirements. Oh, it's a lovely touch on the back. Beautiful pace on that white touch. The, I wonder it's not a touching ball. The ref didn't call a touching ball. It's amazing how the pendulum sways in the opposite direction now, and Fakhri would certainly be feeling the pressure. I think he would now uh, uh, feel a lot more pressure than Shal. Shal would be feeling very, very confident, having pulled back two frames, and I think he's backing himself to clinch this match. And look at this. They, they might be playing themselves into a stalemate, just touching, 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 touching. I think a couple more of the shots, and um, they'll call a re-rack if this continues if much it's, longer. If it's not a touching ball, it might be a touching ball. I think the ref had called a touching ball and Charles will now, if, it, if the white ball is touching the red ball, he's got to play away. And Charles would now have an excellent opportunity to play away and leave the white ball into bulk. From this in excellent bulk. camera view, we can see, can't see the exact line, but you can see it might be very close to touching. It, it, it is from the way Charles playing the ball. Well, the ref had called touching ball. He's playing away, getting the white ball into bulk. And getting that red on the side of the t on the right side of the table covered. Is it covered? Can Fakhri have a go at it? He will if he can. Seems to be going for it. And earlier he was spotting those balls, right? Now he is a bit under pressure. He knows he rude, he messed up the chance. He's now given Shaw the first opportunity to strike blood. And with uh, 12 minutes to go, maybe 10 minutes, 11 minutes, I would think. I think he's realized now, what has he done? Yes, it's on 11 minutes to go. So if Shaw, Shaw's going to really dig in here and try and make a break. He's not letting this go. He's fighting. He's fighting all the way. Well, I must commend him on his fighting. He was resilient. He... You know, he stood firm. He was not intimidated by Fakhri's early potting and backed himself to get back into this match. And he did that. And I believe now he is well poised to clinch victory. 
and claim the fourth pro snooker title in a row. And let's be honest, Farad, he's not playing the same snooker he played the last couple of days. He is a little bit off his song. He's playing well, but not as well as he did yesterday. No, he, yesterday. he's not as, not as fluent, but I tell you, sometimes the best victories uh, come from the not-so-pretty snooker. Yes. So uh, he's got to get the job done, and uh, I think he, he will. Shaw looking favourite at this moment with the, wall, the way the balls are set up. There's uh, three reds in the open. One at the top cushion, one at the top of the pack, and the one close to the pink side. He's definitely looking the favourite here. Well, potting this will take him to 16. He has another red on below the black. He would, it's an easy position. Pot that red, bring himself black onto the black, black ball and have a 24 break. And, um, and he's that shows be enough. very good at locking out the frame. He will play this game so tight. He will not leave Fakhri a gap off after this unless he makes an unforced error. Yeah, so um, Charles continuing his break. We must remember the score is tied at four each according to the rules of the championship in eight minutes time uh, time would have uh, elapsed for this match and whoever is ahead on points in this frame would win the match so we will not be playing another frame we have a time limit on this match and we have less than we probably have uh, under this 10 minutes left Yes, no, there's about there's eight a shot minutes. Off. There we go. We have eight minutes left, so there won't be sufficient time for the completion of this frame. And whoever's ahead in points will be awarded the match. The match will be awarded to the person ahead in points. And at this stage, it certainly seems that it will be Mr. Sure. Charles Yonk with a healthy 24 lead. And he's not done yet, he's still at the table. I don't believe Fakhri will be getting back to the table. Shaw's going to play a nice run through into the pack to try and get onto the black. It's a bit of a risky shot, but he is definitely as a I said that we have a bit of drama. Fakhri being a bit dramatic in running to the table, but he's to, he has to score a bit more than 24 points in the to next clinch few minutes. victory. So this is becoming speed snooker now. It's becoming very interesting. But he has sufficient time. He shouldn't be yes. that. He shouldn't be that pressed for time. A lovely shot to come back onto the red. That was not the intention totally, but he is on the red, and he's trying to run around the table. And now we we have exciting. And he does not few realize. minutes left. He's got like uh, seven minutes left, I think. Aiming with one eye and keeping the other eye on the shot clock, and laughing at the situation, although smiling at it. I think the, the, the timekeeper must have mentioned the time there. Nine. Nine. He didn't get the best position there. Get the best position. But uh, although he's pressed for time, he has to, well, waste a second or two in making yeah. sure on that black. Oh, oh and this. I think... Yes, that was his opportunity. That was his opportunity, and Charles, Charles now composing himself because he knows he's got to make this opportunity count. Whatever he does at the table now is going to be his winning break. Well, Munir, I think with that Ms. Black went uh, uh, Fakhri's opportunity to win the match. This has is gone with that Ms. Black. So well, um, this format is very different, but it is very exciting. You know, because now for the players, you've got to now play a bit of speed snooker. You know, a bit of speed pool, never be of speed snooker. So they're both rushing. Well, Charles not rushing. He's got a bit of a small lead. He'll want to take his time. Fakhri and quite was, rightly so. Yes, and Fakhri was rushing. He didn't actually need to. There was enough time. And saying that, Charles goes enough. Amazing. Um, 
That was incredible. This <laughs> game keeps on turning on its head. I think these players are doing this deliberately, to be quite honest. I, 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 <laughs> they're providing enough drama for us. I wonder how much time is left. Fakhri must just take his time. There's still about five minutes left. He's still got a full five ah, minutes. Well, he's got a lot of time. I, I don't understand why he was rushing. Yeah, he's still got five minutes. Five and, you know, minutes. You can make a, a reasonable break in five minutes. Well, in five minutes, you could clear this table. Yeah. Wow, that was, that a was a lovely shot. Pot. So, Fakhri, not all yet out of it, eh? There's still a couple of reds. Are we to see one more twist in this, uh, <laughs> in this uh, match? I think uh, we, had, we had quite a few. And I, uh, Fakhri has plenty of time. He shouldn't be rushing at all. Well, he is taking his time in here. He, he is. No He's a bit more composed than he was in his previous and visit. And now, with, if he pots this blue ball, it would put him one point ahead. And there's four minutes left still to go. And he pots that, and he is now a point ahead, and he'll have a... And he's not in the ideal position to get back into the break. Yes. Mr. Kessem, with five points, uh, five minutes left, I have to leave you, and it's been a pleasure commentating with you. And I will leave you and the viewers Thank you. to... Thank you to the president of Snook and Badia South Africa for helping us in the commentary. You've uh, done a tremendous job. We appreciate your input. Uh, good luck further, and thanks for your input. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kessem. Thank you. It's been a pleasure All right. commentating on this game. I think we've still got a match. couple of minutes left before you need to really go. So let's just see what happens here. Fakhri Khirdin is one point ahead, and he's got an opportunity to put this ball. Is he going to go for it? All right, Munir, I'm going to leave you to call out and commentate the rest of the match. It's been great fun, and um, I'm going to go and watch it live in the arena. All Thank right. you all, and it's been a pleasure. God bless. Thank you. That was uh, Farad James, the president of Snooker and Billiard South Africa. He's got to go and do the formalities in the arena with uh, the CEO of uh, Pro Snooker, Mr. Cuban Mudley. The frame is reaching a very exciting time now. Shawl just slipping up a little bit. Fakhri Khirdin leading by one point. The shot clock is counting down. It's counting down, ladies and gentlemen. We've only got a few minutes left here. We are on two minutes left, I think. Two minutes, maybe less than three minutes. So whoever, there's it, two minutes, 38, 37 seconds. So whoever is leading at the end of that two minutes will be winning this game and match according to the rules of this tournament. Very exciting stuff. Fakhri Khirdin pots the red. He's giving himself a great opportunity to take this frame. And knowing Fakhri, he's gonna play, he's gonna play a very good safety here. He, I don't think he's going to risk anything. He's not gonna he's not gonna risk anything. With a minute to go, he's gonna take his time. He's really taking his time, he's looking at the situation, where must he put the ball? He'll want to roll it up behind the brown or one of the other colors. Use the yellow to roll it behind the brown. And leave Shawl in trouble. So Shawl is really in trouble now. With two points behind. And the ball's all intact. What does Shawl do here? Go for it and go for a, a big shot into the pack? I would have done that. Because just over a minute left, what, what can he really do here? Fakhri will just keep playing a safety. Shawl should have just rather thrown caution to the wind and smacked into the pack and hope for something because he's not going to get another opportunity. Fakhri will keep putting a safety until the ball sticks its neck out. And Fakhri can play good safety, as you see. A very good safety, a very good safety. On, on. I think Shawl can barely see the red. He's in the with one minute to go. Anything can still happen. Anything can still happen. Is Shaw going to smack into the balls? Oh, what a wonderful shot. What a wonderful shot. One more twist in this tail. One more twist. If Shaw pots his ball, he's almost certain of winning this match. He's almost certain. So this, this is a game ball. This is for game, set and match. Is he going to pot it? 
Easy going to put it. Great stuff. And he's clenching his fist. Shaul knows that that was what he needed. He knows that's what he needed. Excellent stuff from Shaul Young. Under pressure, that was not an easy pot. He's potted a tremendous black. All he has to do now is play a safety. There's like a few seconds to go. And he will be declared the winner of this match. And he's taking his time, rightfully so, playing within the rules of the game. Time will, will be called probably before he plays the shot. Time. Well done to Shaw Young. What a fight back. There we are. Time has been called. He has been declared the winner. Congratulations, Shaw Young. It's unfortunate that this match had to, had to be decided on the shot clock. It would have been lovely to see the best of 13 match. Great, great, great match from both competitors. It was an exciting final. And uh, very well done to Shaul Young. Shaul Young hugging his old mate there, Wayne Parker, who's always been in Shaul Young's camp. And a lot of the spectators congratulating the players over there. Fakri. So it was a very exciting final. Fakri. A very different type of event with the shot clock being called, but uh, an excellent final. Myself. I don't Good know quality sticker, Shaul right Young. Now. But showing his relief. Where did it go wrong? No, I think it um, probably didn't go wrong anyway. It was a tense match. Uh, we both wanted to get in first in the last frame. Um, you know, there were a couple of errors, but uh, we really fought hard. It was a hard battle. And towards the end, I mean, I thought I played a good safety and he pulled a good red and a good color to pinch it on the time. And, and that's well done to him. Tough luck, so near, and yet so far. We look forward to seeing you in the next event, and all the best. Thank you. And now to the man of the moment, the champion who has won four in a trot. We say congratulations. What went right? <laughs> Hardly anything. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, uh, this is divine intervention. I mean, I was snooped, I swerved, I sunk the red, part of the black, and then all the emotions came out. Uh, yeah, Fakri had me the whole match. Um, he, he had me on the back foot. He played smart snooker. Um, something just didn't click today. But you know what? The fighting spirit, um, I fought for every shot. I fought for every frame. And you know what? It all culminated in that black. One more question for you. How does it feel to trail? I've never seen you trailing. <laughs> Today you had to be trailing from behind the whole time. It was a terrible feeling. Yeah, I, I, not a good feeling. Um, but I had to knuckle down and, um, you know, show what's in the bag. And, you know, luckily it was just, just, just enough. Congratulations once more. Let's put our hands together for the winner. You gentlemen gave us a show that was entertaining. I remember I said you're going to give us premium entertainment and premium entertainment is what we got. We got value for our money. Moving along, I have three gentlemen that are going to assist me to hand over the prizes to the winner. CEO of Pro Snooker, Cuban Mudley, please come forward. Mr. Cuban Moodley is going to assist me with handing out uh, the check for the winner. Gold Drift City General Manager, Mr. Kiran Singh, please come along. Thank you once more for this fabulous and world-class arena that you afforded to us. Mr. Singh is going to help us to hand the trophy to the winner. Last but certainly not least, the president himself of, of SABSA, Mr. Farad James, please come through. <laughs> Mr. James is going to hand over the check to the gentleman with the highest break and also uh, the runner up. All right. So without much further ado, I'm going to call on Mr. Kiyashin. Mudli, yeah. oh yes, break of 108. I am sure you were sweating as you were sitting in the grandstands and saying, 
Is it safe? And yes, it is safe indeed. Well done, well done, well done. This man really gave us a show of not when he got that 108 break. Well done, Kiashan Mudli. And of course, the runner up for today. I'm very emotional as well. <laughs> it was a, yeah, a roller coaster. Congratulations to you, Fahri Fireball Hirden. Well done. And the big one goes without say to the assassin, Charles Young. He pockets a whooping 15,000 rand. Well done to the ghost himself, the assassin. Well done. Mr. Singh, will you do the honors for us? And ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap. And we look forward to seeing you in the next event in Durban. UJB Masters is coming up. Thank you for being here. And God bless you. See you next time. My name is Alison. Lovely. Back in the studio, we'd like to thank, uh, on behalf of ProSnooker, we'd like to thank Gold Reef City uh, Casino for the sponsorship of this event and the use of the facilities. We'd also like to thank uh, 360 TV for their streaming and their TV services for an excellent camera and workmanship here. And we'd like to thank all the sponsors that were involved in this event and all the spectators for pitching up for the final and all the participants and everyone involved in this event. Thank you from the studio and look forward to seeing you in the next event next year. Thank you and goodbye.